Took a minute to connect. <laughs> okay, there we go. I think I did it. <laughs> Let me update it. I think it's working. Yay. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I'm going to try hey, to pop everybody. this out and see if I can bring it to the front. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. How you doing? Welcome to Saturdays with Steph. Hopefully you can see us and hear us. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. I think I got it all connected correctly. All right. I think we're good to go. Awesome. How's Yay. everybody? Hi. I don't, I'm going to have to, uh, I can only look at the, um, uh, what, am, what is the word I'm looking for? The chat. <laughs> if I'm not in the video. So let me go yeah. over here and see what everybody's saying. No, that's good. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Hi, Mary, Jacqueline, Tracy, Navy Quilter, Linda Parsons, Vicki Lemire. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Carrie. Let's see who else is here. Hi, Patchwork Mermaid. Hi, Joyce from Icy Cold, Connecticut. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see who else did i miss uh linda dollar and jacqueline spear welcome hi barbara oh she said two of my favorite people in the house thank you <laughs> oh you're so sweet that is very sweet <laughs> lay down right well there. hi i'm stephanie if you don't know of stephanie stitches and this is my friend yvette I'm Yvette <laughs> trying to fix everything because Jelly Bean decided to come up here. <laughs> now it's Jelly Bean flying through the camera. <laughs> yes, it's Jelly Bean. If you ever Her see baby. him passing through. When we were getting ready, he like jumped up in her chair and said, I'm sitting here. I'm the star of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, D. He is. He's Cindy. like, you know. Hi, Kathy. How you doing? Kathy's Cute Creations is here. Hey, Kathy. Hi, Dorlin. Hi, Joyce. Jelly bean, don't play with that. Oh, Vicky said she's waiting for her cinnamon roll dough to finish rising young. Oh, my goodness. I'll have to like send my address or something. I know, right? <laughs> well, tonight we're just going to uh, work on some of our own projects. So if you have a project to finish for Christmas or... Um, you know, a UFO that you just want to work on because you were done with Christmas presents, which you're ahead of me. And that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I'm just going to go through like the questions that you guys had for us that we didn't get to last night. I didn't want to alienate Christy too much because she was the only non quilter. So <laughs> I saved a bunch of the super quilting questions for today. So I thought that would be kind of fun. Oh, Navy, Navy quilter is Mallory. Mallory. <laughs> Okay. Jinx. Nice to you meet you, Mallory. <laughs> huh? I said, Jinx, you owe me a Diet Dr. Pepper. That's what I'm Okay, Diet Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Come when you're with. <laughs> you Hi, Kat. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you said, go ahead, and I was drinking coffee. Oh. <laughs> I was just, I don't even know what I was saying. You go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. I just want to say hi to Pat Strawhouse. Hey, Kay, how's your knee doing? Uh, Nancy Guest just said she just finished a Bible cover. Oh, I bet that's pretty. I bet. Kathy's working on snowflakes. Tracy is sewing binding for her Thomas the Train quilt, and then we'll be adding, wait, sewing, oh, and then we'll be Binding the quilt. Binding what the quilt to be done. Sorry. Yeah. She's I, making I, the, the binding right the now. The words are like this big way over there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Hi, Diane. Oh, Patchwork Mermaid is drinking Dr. Diet Dr. Pepper. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <sighs> Joanne is binding a table runner. Dorlin is coming up with mug rug ideas for the new swap, Dorlin. I don't know if you guys saw it, but um, Lisa Marie just opened the next swap. It's um, you're going to make a mug rug and you're going to send somebody a literally a mug rug and a, and a mug to go with it. So it's oh. a smaller um, 
swap this time around, which is kind of cool. You have less time to do it. I think we only have like a month or five weeks, but um, it's such a smaller one that I think it, it won't be hard to do. And I think because it's just a, such a small project, if you've ever wanted to do a swap and you've never done one before, it's a good one to jump into. So I think I might actually do that one then. Yeah, I am too, because those mug rugs, I mean, I made that one with Sarah on my Vlogmas one day in what, like 40 minutes and that was teaching her. So yeah. Yeah. So quick and easy. Maybe I'll make one of the like snack mats because oh, those are great quick. idea. Yeah. Those are quick. Yeah. And then yeah, yeah. You just throw a mug in. I mean, I did that in a video. I think it only took me like four hours maybe to do it. And that was, you know, that's really not that long because I was filming at the same time. Right. So, <laughs> right. Filming. If I can just make it something makes it twice as long. So yeah, I mean, that'll go quick for you. That'll be really nice. Yay. One that I can actually do and probably <laughs> get it done on time. Yeah. I actually signed up for this one too. Cause I was like, Oh, a quick and easy one. That'll be fun. So. I'm glad you said that Cause awesome. I didn't know what it was. Yeah. 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 She just released, I think it just opened yesterday. So cool yeah um excited to see the mystery box need to finish quilting my aunt's quilt this weekend said navy quilter bj said hello everyone hi marla hi laura how you doing uh Kay said the right knee great left knee surgery in five days oh you have to have the other one done too oh uh, wow Oh, goodness gracious. I well, did I'm not know that, that you're doing good with the right one. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Pat Strawhouse said she's also drinking Diet Dr. Pepper. So there's a lot of Diet Dr. Pepper. For all of you guys awesome. drinking Diet Dr. Pepper. You're um, all a vet's new best friend. <laughs> well, let me tell you, you also, um, if you saw Brett last night, Brett Lewis, he likes Diet Dr. Pepper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Shirley. Oh. Shirley Heinemann's here. Hey, girl. Tracy said mug rugs are so quick to put out. Yes. That's, yes, the, I'm that's why I was like, no hesitation to sign up for this swap because it's one that I can actually get done. <laughs> Barbara, you're asking about making a cow with Minky. Um, I actually received a cow made with Minky, um, Ooh. from Del Marie. I don't know if you have seen Del Marie on here, but she's on, she's always on our lives. She might be here today. I don't remember seeing her name, but um, I do know that she's in, um, if you're in the Lisa Marie swap, she's in there. Just search her name and ask her because she makes them. So awesome. she will be able to tell you for sure. Yeah. I've long armed Minky, but I've never made like things with Minky, but I, that would feel amazing. It does. <laughs> yeah. yeah um let's see learning to quilt on quilt as you go mug rug oh perfect that's a perfect project to start to learn the quilt as you go nice and small and you get it done yep um pamela colburn's here hey hey pamela uh, snack rug is something that that came up with it's like a mug rug but it's a little bit it's longer right yeah, it's a little bit bigger so that you can have room for your coffee or tea and then also your snack. Yeah, so yeah. it's a little bit bigger. It's not it's not enormous. In fact, I'll show you the one I made. I have it right here. So you can kind of see um, like what the size is. So it's a little bit bigger, but you have like your coffee or whatever or your Either way, but like you can have one thing on this side and then the other thing yeah. on this side. And oh, yeah, that's and so quick. cute. I love that. And it is a free Lord. pattern. So feel free. Oh, yep. Lord. Event pattern. So <laughs> if you go to her, it's linked on your Vlogmas, right? Um, yeah. If yeah. you, I'll put here. Cause I don't know. Her channel, like Yvette's channel is in my description box below, but if you go to her channel and find the Vlogmas She's going to link it here. Um, you guys can get that pattern for free. So thank you, Yvette. That's cute. Yeah. Like if you just go to the store and then on, when, where it says collections, if you mm -hmm. click on collections and then click on freebies, it's right there. Awesome. And then just go straight through checkout with a zero and you're fine. It'll let you check right out. That's so nice of you. Well, I try. 
I like doing that. You know, I mean, yeah. everyone supports me. So anytime I have the time <laughs> to like write a pattern or whatever, that's small and cute and quick for everybody. Why not? Just, you know, yeah. have fun you. with it. That's where Mermaid asked, how many colorways were there for the Fort Worth quilt behind you? I saw Kathy had a different colorway. Okay. So the one behind me is the kit from Fort Worth. You don't have to use their fabric and actually they're sold out of the kits. You can use your own fabric. Kathy actually got a kit from them, but she didn't like the green background. She's not a fan of green. So she pulled from her own stash and did the blue background, but the other colors in her quilt, I think are the same. I think she used all the rest of the fabric. So there wasn't other colorways. She just changed out the background, background fabric. So I kind of liked it. So I left it. I've never made a green quilt. So I thought it was kind of interesting. <laughs> I have to look at it. I think the last, yeah, the last day where we put it all together is Monday. So I'll have it done this next yeah. week. I'm really excited to see it all go together. So I got one of the kits, but I haven't been able to make it. So yeah, I still have the Fort Worth. If you guys don't know Fort Worth Fabric Studio, just about every season, right? Yvette comes out with a, yeah, I want to say that probably every like three or four months. Yeah. Like a something quarter. like that. Yeah. They come out with like a mystery quilt where, um, you can either buy the kit and then download the patterns and make it. They release their patterns like one set of blocks a week for like six weeks. Yep. Um, uh, they have them seasonally and you can either buy the kit or you can use your own fabric. They don't require you to buy a kit. You get the patterns for free. Um, but I still haven't even started the, I bought the summer kit cause I thought it was really cute and I haven't even started that yet. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> uh, but this one, I was like, I'm determined. I'm going to keep up with it. I'm going to do it. So, <laughs> well, I know that also, if you, um, see anybody making one, um, like on YouTube or, or anywhere really. And you're like, Oh my goodness, I really like that. And let's say it's from like a couple of years ago, you can still get the patterns. They'll, yeah. they, ha they keep them on their website. So, you know, if you are interested, definitely go over, I think it's um, when you go to Fort Worth fabric studio.com on the top, right, you'll see, it'll say digital downloads or digital patterns or something like that. You click on that and they'll all come up you'll see them. Yeah, I'm going to put the link for the one behind me in the chat now in case you guys are interested in this one, but it was a lot of fun. The blocks went together really quick and they were so cute the way they were coming out. I was super excited. So the, uh, the only one that was tricky was the gingerbread man. His legs were a little bit, a little bit funky, but if you've been quilting for a little bit, you'll be fine. Plus I made a video. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. I missed a bunch of comments. Let me see. They asked if you sold the pattern and she answered that it's free on her site. So, okay. Oh, Kathy said, yes, Stephanie's correct about the fabric. She's, she's using oh. most of the fabric. She just changed her background. Yeah. That's what I thought. Um, Kay said, I still have the fall with acorns and sunflowers. Oh, well, you kind of had knee surgery. <laughs> is that okay? I, I know that this is my fault. I've already forgotten Kev Mirth's name. Is it Maria? Marie? Mary. I don't remember. Yeah. Is it? Mary. Yeah. Mary. Mary. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I was, I was close, which is like, that, that's a miracle for me. She goes, what is the system of putting fabric on your shelves? I can't figure it out. Well, it's, does it fit right here? Let me shove it in this little spot. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> is it going to fall over if I put it there? Can I like stick a, something underneath it to make it stick back? So it doesn't fall off the shelf. That's what it is. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Oh, Tracy said this will be her third completed quilt. She's proud of herself. You should be. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. It's so, that's so lovely. I, yeah. I love finishing anything, yeah. <laughs> like anything at this point. Gary said, I downloaded the pattern. So cute. Wouldn't have seen it if it weren't for Steph. Oh, good. I'm glad I could help you. 
Joy said your video of the gingerbread man is great. Oh, good. That was their likes are tricky. So I was hoping that I filmed it well enough that you all could see because yeah, I saw it on the Facebook group. A lot of people were having trouble with the legs. So, I'm oh, that was watch. two years ago. Kay said that was two years ago. Oh my goodness. What was two years ago? The one with the sunflowers. Like I remember watching oh. you put that together and that was two years ago. I know. I, I can't believe it either. Where is the time but, going? I mean, I oh believe it, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so um while you're working, I'm gonna ask you a few of these questions that we had left over. Sound okay. good? Awesome. Okay, I had one that somebody sent me, actually Patchwork Mermaid, who's on here tonight, um had asked it's in it, she specifically had put for Yvette. I would love to know if you create the Pixie Girl artwork that you use on your videos and other media. No, I do not. No, I do not. Um, that, um, her name is Kara, Karam Fia. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but look, I'll type it down here. Um, I buy all of those things from her. She is the artist and um, she, I don't even remember where it is she lives. She's not American, um, but you can, if you're interested, you can buy it as well. Um, and and use it i have to buy obviously the the more expensive pack so that i can use it in my designs and stuff but you can get it you know just the personal use and uh and use it as well if you'd like to but i just i remember the first time that i saw her artwork and i just fell in love i think i was looking for um i was starting piecing it real and I was looking for some sort of, you know, um, quilting or sewing or whatnot um, artwork. And I didn't, know, you know, I started out with one. And then as I scrolled and scrolled and I saw her stuff, that's it. I've been sold ever since. So I buy not every collection because not all of her artwork is exactly like that. Um, but everything that has those types of girls in it like all the different seasons and stuff like that you'll see it um in my stuff and i i do use it and she's just amazing i love i just love that aesthetic in her drawing so that's her name <laughs> <laughs> and they're super cute hello <laughs> i know they really are she's amazing <laughs> i love them <laughs> oh next time we're live i'll have to wear my sweatshirt so they can see her <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> I love her. Okay. So, um, let's see. This question was from, uh, Kathleen Terrio. Um, her, she said, if you work full time outside the, so outside, oh, wait. Yeah. If you have a full-time job, oh, wait, my question is for the, oh gosh, I'm not reading this right. I'm so sorry. My question is for those who work full time outside of their sewing world. If you didn't have to work that job, what would you be doing with regards to your sewing or quilting career? Oh my goodness. I, Everything. Well, <laughs> I would um, be able to spend more time on piecing a reel, which is where my heart is and where I'm trying to get back to. Um, I had, I, I have been trying for a really long time to make quilting my career. Um, whether it's teaching or, you know, doing tutorials on YouTube, um, just, you know, those are the kinds of things I like. I, I, I really want to design more and I want to teach. And uh, unfortunately it's just not gonna work out and that's okay. But that also means that I have to sort of downsize on something. So I'm smack in the middle of trying to make my online quilt shop a lot smaller. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would definitely teach and design full-time for sure that's what I wanted to do so yeah. um, I want to make piecing it real a lot better 2,000 times better than it is right now that's my goal so yeah I'm not there yet but I'm working toward it that's my that's my goal you'll get there I know you will 
Um, and you've realized yours. So I'm very proud of you. I think that's still great. A, it's still a struggle though. There's still a lot of work, but yeah, I'm well, closer than you are. And I know the exact position that you're in because I was there, you know, this, um, I do. Yeah. So I, I wish for you what I got to do because I know how hard it is to go to a job every day. That's that burns you out and doesn't treat you right. And your heart is somewhere else. So yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I mean, there are so many people in the world who are in the same boat I'm in. So it's not like, you know, I'm the only one and um, I'm just going to have to learn to live with it. I mean, that's what we have to do. I mean, I have to have a job because, you know, we've got expenses and that's just how it is. So yeah, uh, it, it was a hard lesson to learn. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> um, and you yeah. know, but, but it's okay. You know, it, I pivot, we move and boom, <laughs> done. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Okay, I wanted to say hi to Regine. Emily is here and Kimber is who have come in. How are you doing? Hello. Um, so this is a two-part question. One was for me and one was for you from Linda Price. Okay. She asked me before you long before your long arm, did you ever do free motion quilting on your domestic machine? So the answer to that is yes. Um, I did a little bit, but um I very quickly got a mid-arm because um if you guys think about the way you free motion on a domestic and some people are geniuses at it. I was not, I'm not super artistic. Um, so the fact that you have to move the paper instead of moving the pen, because when you write, you move the pen, when you free motion on your domestic, you're moving the paper. It didn't make sense to my brain. It seemed backwards. So I got a mid arm on a small frame before I got my long arm. And so I learned how to free motion quilt more on my mid arm, um, than my domestic. Of course I can always do straight line quilting. And I did a little bit. I mean, I did the basic meandering swirls, things like that, but they were never great. You know, my stitches were never, you know, perfect. And not that everything has to be perfect, but they, they weren't good. <laughs> so, um, and the reason why I decided to get a long arm is because for bigger pieces, we had a local quilt shop, which was one of the few around here that did long arm quilting that I took them to. And I didn't, I didn't care for them very much. And there was not really anybody else in the area at the time, long arm quilting. So um, I decided to take the jump once I learned on the mid arm to a long arm. And I only had the mid arm for about six months before I took that leap. And I'm so glad I did. I would never go back. I'm thrilled that I have a long arm. And that's one of the things that I love to do most in quilting is long arm. So the other part of the question from Linda is, um, this question is for Yvette. I was wondering if she does free motion quilting or does she send all of her quilts out to be quilted? <laughs> I am allergic to quilting. I say that <laughs> all the time. <laughs> um, I send it out. If I have, you know, like this little mug rug guy, you know, I can do that. I do straight line. It'll fit under the throat without me wanting to, you know, chuck it out the window. And um, <laughs> I can do stuff like that. But quite honestly, I leave it to the professionals. I like to send it to uh, Steph or, you know, if Steph is busy, then I'll send it to someone else. But yes, somebody else does my quilting. <laughs> oh, yeah. I already knew the answer to that question before I asked it, but I was like, I'm going to let them find out. <laughs> yes, I, I, yep. I'm a piecing fool, but I don't like to quilt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And here's the funny thing is that I love, love, love to quilt. I love to long arm. Um, Yvette absolutely does not like to quilt, but she loves to bind and I don't like to bind. So we always say like, I should, she should send all her quilts to me to quilt and I should send all mine to her to bind. <laughs> absolutely. I would bind your so, quilt. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, uh, Jim Bennett, Seely, and I saw somebody else new. I think Della. Yeah. Della Badger came in. So hi guys. Thank you for Nancy coming. Gus is here too. Oh, Nancy Gus. Hey, I didn't see yep. her. Sorry. That just, That's okay. Up. Just scrolled up. Yep. So, hey guys, thanks for coming. Um, let me see what other questions I have. Hmm. Oh, Mary Kubacek said, um, how many quilts do you have sitting around not being used? Oh, 
finished quilts <laughs> finished quilts yeah um well i have some that are on display like i have a um gosh i don't even know yeah four or five six maybe seven i don't know something it's it's something like that but most of um yeah i i would say it's probably five or six i i really don't know off the top of my head okay what about you do you know <laughs> i have um that are finished i've got don't we'll we'll talk about that in a second but <laughs> i probably only have I think three that are finished that are like over my quilt ladder. I have a quilt ladder in my bedroom mm -hmm. um, that are not quote unquote being used. I mean, I've got wall hanging quilts and stuff, but I'm not sure if that counts. I'm assuming she means used by like, we're like throwing them on our bed or cuddling with them. Right. Um, I give most of my quilts away, to be honest with you. Like when I make it, I usually have somebody in mind, or if I don't have somebody in mind, by the time I finish it, somebody wants it. Um, so yeah, I don't really have that many. Now that doesn't count the ones I have. I have a huge pile of my own quilts that I need to long arm. <laughs> so right. I always put those at the bottom of the pile um, when I have customer quilts. So I've got probably, don't judge, probably 15 or 16 quilts of my own that I need to long arm. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I think that's yeah. amazing though. I mean, yeah, I, got a pile. I don't have that many. I, I, I do have maybe two or three, honestly, everything okay. else is probably, um, still in progress. Like I'm, I have larger quilts that are in progress, but I don't have any that are actually finished. <laughs> Everything's yeah. in some sort of crazy state of waiting <laughs> to be finished <laughs> yeah well the other part of her question is when do you decide to part with some of your quilts hanging around I think that probably answered her question we don't have a whole lot of extra quilts hanging you know so. yeah and I'll be honest it's like um I don't have a whole lot of people like clambering for quilts for me and I'm at a point right now where I just want to keep everything I know it <laughs> sounds very selfish but I'm like um but I've never had people ask me to be honest. So I, yeah. to me, it's like, I, I kind of feel like people aren't interested and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, I'll keep them for myself rather than give it to somebody who's just going to put it in a closet or something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Harry Geyer's here. Hey, Sherry. Polly, Hi, Sherry. Peter, Polly Lorenz, Don Denny's here. Hi guys. And Paula Hoopengardner's here. Hey. Hello. Um, so yeah, that was a good question. Let me see. Oh, okay. Um, Karen, I'm going to kill her name, but Karen Urich maybe um, said, I've never gone to, retreat, to a retreat. What retreat did you attend and what made it the best? Um. I think I've only been to one retreat. Oh, really? I'm trying to think. I mean, I only remember one. Um, and it was one that was in Arkansas. And I had gone to that one with Becca and her mom. And I think you went to that one, but you went to a different, you went the next year. Next year, yeah. Um, and I just like sitting and sewing with, a group of people and we didn't really have anything set so you could bring whatever you wanted and yeah. um I got like my mom's um what is that sunbonnet sue quilt practically done by the time we were done so I that I really enjoyed that it was like you know you had that opportunity to finish something and just work on something and um not being interrupted with anything it was amazing <laughs> yeah that I was just going to say that that was probably, I've been to a couple retreats. That was probably my favorite one because it was very relaxed. If you wanted to just sit and sew, you could just sit and sew. Nobody bothered you. You could sit in your pajamas all day. Nobody judged. <laughs> yep. And I too finished like a whole quilt that I had made like two blocks and stuck it in a drawer a couple of years ago and, and I had a hard time. It was an emotional quilt. So I, I had a hard time 
finishing it. So I kind of stuck it in a drawer and left it there. So I took it and it was a pretty good size quilt. And I finished the whole top while I was there. So I was pretty happy with that. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's my, that's my favorite thing about, um, about doing that. Yeah. 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 That was a good question. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see. Kim said, the wall behind you is great. Do you use a lot of it for quilt piecing? Talking to you. Oh, <laughs> um, yes. And, you know, it's funny because I've had so many comments with people going, why do you never use the fabric behind you? And quite honestly, I use a lot of the fabric that's behind me. The, the thing is that everything is such a mishmash up there that when I pull something out, you know, I'll normally like, if I have something in mind, I go up and down the shelves and I find what I think I want. I might pull, you know, three or four different things out and then um, use one of those, but there's no way you're ever going to notice that I took something out of there. I mean, <laughs> because it's such a mishmash right now. It's not like yeah. I used to have it very organized. And then I started unboxing and I started, um, you know, doing all the things. So uh -huh. cleaning and straightening is like the last thing that ever happens. And, um, yeah, I, I should probably find some time to do that, but that's why you're never going to notice that I took fabric off that shelf. You're yeah. never going to notice. It's, there's constantly <laughs> fabric going on and coming off and going on and coming off and the way yeah. it, it's not organized. So, well, I was know. just going to say, because you keep getting more boxes because you open boxes for different, um, companies, you're, it's just going to keep getting replaced. So Yes. And it's not, you know, everything is not the same aesthetic. I could get modern fabric. I can get, you know, more traditional fabric. I can get kid fabric. I get, you know, just all sorts of things. I've got Liberty up there. I've got, um, you, you know, so it, it, it's such a mishmash. You've never noticed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Christine Houghton said, has any, have any of you created a quilt design of your own or a fabric design? fabric line not a fabric line I have written patterns of my own so I think that's probably in the same boat yeah we're exactly the same I have yep. not designed any fabric um but I have written a lot of patterns so um well I say a lot I don't know I mean I feel like it's a lot <laughs> but definitely just the, the beginning of uh designing so Hopefully there'll be a whole lot more in the future because I yes. really like doing that. <laughs> yeah. Mary said she'll gladly take a quilt of yours, Yvette. <laughs> oh, geez. I'm okay. finding up first, then Mary. <laughs> okay. Sheila Gage said, what do you like most and least about quilting? And what is your favorite line of fabric? Okay. That last part, there ain't no way I can answer that. <laughs> no. <laughs> that is ever changing. I mean, honestly, new stuff comes out. I mean, I can kind of maybe give you an idea of my favorite designers, but as far as picking one collection, there's absolutely no way. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. What was the first one? <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, what do you like most and least about? Quilting? Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Um, what do I like most? I mean, honestly, I know this is going to sound like some, some kind of crazy, but my favorite part is always the binding because it means I'm done. I have a finished something. So the binding is always my favorite. And of course, the least favorite is quilting. Quilting. <laughs> so I know that I'm, I'm broken record right now, but seriously, that's where I'm at. You go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> well, my most favorite part is the quilting, but binding is a catch 22 for me. That's my least favorite part, but I will say this, once you round that last corner and you see it almost done, then I get excited. Then I'm like, okay, I don't mind this binding stuff. <laughs> Cause you're like, woohoo, I almost have that quilt done. It's very exciting. Yeah. I just don't yeah. like getting to that point. <laughs> I understand. I understand. I, yeah. to, to me, like when I'm doing a larger quilt, um, the binding can be a little annoying just because it's like, it's so big, but at yeah. least I don't have to like, I don't have to fight the whole quilt, you know, under the throat and all of that. It's just, you know, um, that part can be a little bit annoying, but I still have the end game in mind and yeah. And just totally love. I don't know. I, I just, I like doing the binding. So yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'm almost with the vet with the favorite, 
favorite line of fabric, but I can pick a couple that stood out in my mind. Um, she's right where like, there's always new stuff coming out and, um, you know, there's always a next one that's really beautiful, but I always love, um, Lala Boutique or Cory Yoder. And this year I feel like Lala went away for a little bit. She took a nap with some of her fabric lines. I didn't care for a few of them that came out. And then this year, I feel like she hit it out of the park. Like she did Christmas morning, which is one of my all time favorite Christmas lines ever. That and Holly Berry's last year from Cory Yoder. There's like my like two favorite Christmas lines ever. And then um, she just did just out now is love note. And that line is gorgeous. But one of my very favorite lines ever is also from Lola Boutique. It was called Nest. It was a couple of years ago. I don't know if you guys remember it, but that line I have hoarded like nobody's business <laughs> and I haven't made anything from it yet. And I need to, but I'm waiting for just that perfect project. And I think I may have found it. So maybe this next year, you guys will see a quilt of that, but, um, but I'm with Yvette, like they, they just come out with new ones all the time. So it's hard to just pinpoint one, but I can pinpoint like designers that I really, really love. So, yeah, I, I do love, um, you know, farmer's daughter. I honestly oh. wish that I had hoarded more of it. Yeah. Um, and now it's like, if by some miracle I ever see any farmer's daughter, I usually will buy it. I like Nest too, but farmer's daughter for me, I just, and that's Layla Boutique as well, guys, just in case yep. you didn't know. Um, I, I just have always been in love with that one. Um, and then as far as just saying designers, I love Allison Glass. Um, I yeah. almost always love everything by Sandy Gervais. I think she's kind of oh, cool too. Her and Robin are Gibbons. So classic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, Robin Gibbons as well, because she helps me to like more flowers than I normally would. I, mm -hmm. for some reason, just the, her use of colors takes me over the top. So I really like her as well. So those are yeah. the ones that kind of stand out to me. Awesome. Those are good ones for sure. Hi, Maria. Hey, Kathleen. Oh, Kathleen said her son walked by the studio while she was watching you and said, gee, mom, she has more fabric than you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say that's all I have. <laughs> Kay said she loves the excitement of finding a pattern and choosing fabric. Nancy Guess wants to know, Yvette, have you ever long arm quilted? No, never. No. I've never even test drove or nothing. Not at all. <laughs> okay. And I thought this was a really good question from Noam Gatto said, do you have a bucket list quilt that you want to make? Well, I mean, honestly, my bucket list quilt had always been a Judy Niemeyer. And so um, I finally decided this year that I was going to not only make one Judy Niemeyer, <laughs> but heck, why not schedule myself to make five and, you know, try to become one of her certified instructors. So that is my long term goal. Um, is to become an instructor. I don't know how long it's going to take me. It does take a long time. There are a lot of steps, even to try to get accepted into her program. So, um, you know, you could be seeing me and hearing me talk about it for quite some time before I actually get there. But that was always one of my bucket list quilts. I wanted to definitely do one. You would see them uh, and you're looking at it and you're like, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so we will see how it, cause that's what I'm working on right now. Actually, I'm working on the one that I'm doing in a class. So, um, I figured, Hey, this is definitely a UFO cause it's going to be a UFO for a while. If I don't hurry up and not <laughs> get this done, like I'm supposed to. <laughs> yeah. Hey Brenda, I didn't see you before. Sorry about that. If you've got a question, stick it in there. I see you. And, um, Brenda Foley's here and Angela Stoutinger's here. Um, hi girls. I'll scroll up a little and see if I see anything from yeah. Brenda. Sorry about that, Brenda. We just, yeah, sorry. Here we get talking, it goes up and then I don't see it. So sorry about that. 
Donna Strunz had a question in the meantime. She said, what is one quilt you ladies have made you would do again and what fabric line? Um, sorry, I'm trying to find Brenda. <laughs> no, that's okay. In the meantime, I will answer because I totally forgot the bucket list quilt. So okay. on my bucket list, which I intend to do this next year, and I might show you guys if I feel like it's coming out okay. Um, I really, really want to do a Bargello. I've never done a Bargello. I've seen it done multiple different ways. Any of the ways they do it, I know I'm capable of doing. I just have never sat down and done one. So I want to do that. Yes. I, um, now she's, it, so she's saying, I thought she said something that we had already done and would do again. No, that was Donna. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I will, I will always do, um, a jelly roll race. I like doing those. And to me, it's, it, uh, if you, if you do it the right way and you use the right kind of fabrics, I think that it can be, it can draw your attention. And so I haven't always done it properly or, <laughs> um, <laughs> with quite the right fabric, but I'm always interested in doing them. And so that's what I would do. And what would I, what fabric would I use? I actually think it would look amazing in one of Robin Pickens lines of fabric. Um, I don't know which one in particular. I mean, I have right now um, some of her Carolina lilies. So that one would Ooh. definitely be um, an option, but I just think that with those colors that it would totally um, draw your eye. So yeah. I think I would answer for today. That's how I would answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, if I was going to do a quilt again, which I don't typically do because I have so many patterns in my pattern collection that I want to do. Um, but if I had to pick one to do again, I would make the figgy pudding quilt again, the one that I used the did with the Christmas morning fabric that you guys saw hanging behind me for quite a while. That one was so much fun. I love the blocks. They came together so beautifully. Um, I don't know what fabric line I would use, probably another Lala Boutique or Corey Yoder line because both of them make fabrics that would look really good on that pattern. But um, that's the pattern I would do again because I just, I love the way that quilt looks. It's gorgeous, so. Awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, I've, I mean, I've gone over the whole chat and I, don't see anything from, um, from Brenda. So Brenda, if you had a question, um, if you could just put at, um, the event Renee or at Stephanie stitches so that we, it'll, it'll highlight our names and it'll definitely bring our eye to it and we'll see it. And I, I we're both happy to answer your question. So we're yeah. not trying to ignore anybody, please. <laughs> um, it's just, it's very hard because we do have quite a lot of, um, you know, comments coming in. And so, so we won't always see everything. Oh, Teresa's here. Oh, hey, Teresa. I do see that Brenda Foley just said that she has four collections from Robin Pickens Ooh. and she loves her. So yeah, I, I exactly. Cause yeah. you see it and you can't not buy it. I mean, it's just to me, cause it's the yeah. color thing as well. Cause anybody who's like really great with color is totally going to attract yeah. my attention. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Oh, Kim said log cabins was one of her favorites. Yeah. That's a good pattern to do over and over again with different fabric lines. Yeah. I like log cabins too. Um, Celie um, said my figgy pudding Christmas morning quilt was one of the most elegant quilts I've seen in a long time. Thank you. I need, I did actually long arm that one. I haven't long armed a whole lot for myself lately, but I was like determined I was going to get it done by Christmas. So that one I have done, I need to trim it and bind it, but, um, maybe I'll show it to you guys in a couple of days once I get that done, but it's, it's so pretty. It, I am amazed that I made that quilt cause it's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not amazed. You're good. Uh -huh. Thanks. <laughs> what was the pattern that I said was my favorite? The figgy pudding pattern. It's by Lella Boutique. Um, she put it out with her Christmas morning fabric, but you can use any fabric. It would be gorgeous. It's a fat quarter friendly quilt. So um, 
real, it was quick and easy and a lot of fun. They're big blocks, like uh, 18 inch blocks. So it went together fairly quickly and it just looks so pretty. So, yep. Have I made a clamshell quilt? Diana asked. No, I have not. Have you? Um, no, that is, if I'm not mistaken, she's probably asking about the Judy Niemeyer one and, uh, I have not made it. I think that, um, Nita Henderson is, uh, she, cause she bought the pattern from me. So I think that she's planning on making it. Um, I might make it because I do have to make five quilts, but the five quilts have to have different techniques in it. So I have to kind of look at that kind of thing and see if it's gonna fit in with what I'm gonna do. But mm -hmm. uh, I would love to make that clamshell quilt because I think it's really, really nice. My quilting's on hold due to cataracts. Finally getting evaluated January 7th, Jim said. Oh. Yeah, I hope you can get those taken care of so you can quilt again. Yeah, but you know what? It's it's interesting because my mom had cataract surgery and like in both of her eyes. And after she, it was all done, she saw better than she had ever seen in her entire life. Wow. Yeah, so I hope that happens for you because, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, was, I was jellyfish, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I thought about getting that LASIK eye surgery, um, yeah. but my mom got it several years ago and it actually messed up her eyes. Like they wrinkled her, what is it? The lens or something. And oh, so her vision's worse. So I know that's very rare and that doesn't happen. And a lot of people had great success, but it scares me. <laughs> right. Right. So, yeah. Well, especially if you know someone that it happened to, I mean, you know, that's yeah. going to definitely make it stand out in your mind more. That's for sure. Oh, Charlene, you have a really good question. What is your favorite quilting tool or your favorite quilting trick? Hmm. Well, I was um, in the live last night. I did mention that my favorite tool, at least for right now, because, you know, things are always changing for everyone. Mm -hmm. But my favorite thing right now is my stiletto. I really like using the stiletto. Um, mm -hmm. So... I think that's what I would say for right now. And as far as a trick, <laughs> um, I don't know that I have any like specific trick that's coming to mind. I mean, yeah. I do know that there, um, you know, there are certain things that I do that now are like, like habit. So I don't know that I would consider it a trick anymore. If I think of anything before the end though, I will share with y'all <laughs> for sure. <laughs> My favorite thing, and I talked about this last night too, and you guys have seen me use it in most of my videos because I just love it, is this acorn pressing pen. It's, it, it's a game changer for your seams. It makes them so flat, which allows them to nest together so much better and get the blocks, you know, um, to come out so much nicer. So I, I love it. Yeah, I definitely got to find mine because you get you put <laughs> one in your box. I got it. I have one. Well, I just you have it too everything. because you ordered one for me a long time ago. <laughs> yes, but I think somebody asked me about it and I I let them have it. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you're right. You're right. I did buy one from you. And um, yeah, but I'm just one of those crazy people that, you know, occasionally people can talk me into giving them things and... <laughs> Yeah. If I had known at that moment, like how good it was, I probably wouldn't have, but you know, I hadn't yeah. used it yet. So yeah. <laughs> so I got asked this question, which I get asked all the time. So I'm going to answer it again. Okay. Jennifer Masello asks, why is your aura felt upside down? <laughs> <laughs> because my machine is a picky girl. <laughs> my machine is a fast high speed machine. It's a straight stitch only mechanical 1600 stitches per minute, which is the fastest machine on the domestic machine market. Um, it takes high speed needles, um, and or fill the way they spin it on the spools is backwards for my machine. So when I first put or in it, it broke every two seconds. And I was so frustrated. I'm like, man, 
this machine doesn't like or fill. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I started looking into it and read the manual, hmm, gee, there you go. <laughs> I realized that the thread needed to unwind counterclockwise, not, I think it's counterclockwise. Yeah. Counterclockwise instead of clockwise, which Orifil comes off the spool clockwise. So I was like, what can I do to make this work? I flipped it over and ta-da, it worked. And I've never had a problem since, but I literally get this question every time I sew something on a live or on a video. I always get, why is your spools upside down? That's why, because my machine is picky that way. And if I have it the other way, it breaks, but if I turned it around, which is simple to do, it loves it, which is great because I love Orifil. So yeah, very the sad. Question I, I always I use Orifil. <laughs> I'm always asked why do I keep a walking foot on my machine, but it's not a walking foot. So um, it's a dual digital feed system, and I don't think it's only on baby locks anymore, but it used to be only on baby locks. And now I think more machines are starting to come with it. So it stays on your machine. It's not like, I mean, it works sort of in the same way as um, a walking foot, but uh, it's not technically a walking foot. So, but I get that question all the time. Every time I have a video that goes out where you can see the back, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But it's a good question. You, if you don't know, you don't know, you know? Oh yeah. Very so, good question. Yeah. It's just funny. Cause I get it every time. Okay. Yep. A couple of people asked if I finished, if I long arm my Christmas morning quilt, I did, I'll go grab it in a second. I will ask this question to a vet and she can tell you the answer why I go grab it. Okay. Um, she said, do either of you have a preference for clips over pins or vice versa? And you can tell them my answer. Cause I'm sure, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope I know because now I'm on the spot. Um, I'm thinking. <laughs> I know for me, if if at all possible, I use um, the Wonder Clips because they're quick and easy. They're lightweight um, and they're easy to like take off. And they, you know, when you take them off, you know, they can sit like right on your on your table and there's no big deal. If you're like um, taking a bunch of pins out. I mean, and, and I mean, yes, you could have like somewhere or something to put them in or, or whatnot, but it's a whole lot easier in my mind to use the wonder clips. I love wonder clips. Um, now there are situations when you can't use a wonder clip because either your some, whatever it is you're doing is like too small, or you need to have like a bunch together and you're trying to keep it like you're really using the pin like to keep it in a specific spot that it could easily move or I mean there's all sorts of reasons why um but in that situation I will use pins I don't I'm not allergic to them like I am quilting but um I prefer the wonder clips and I think that Steph is the same I am <laughs> You okay. got it. I hate, I hate pinning. I hate pinning unless I, if I have to pin, like that said, there's situations where you have to pin. I will pin, especially if I want that block to come out as perfect as possible. But I really, really hate pinning. If I can clip, I will. Or if I can sew the block without clipping or pinning even better. Uh, right. So, yeah. yeah. I think for me, it's usually when I am forced to use something, it's typically whenever I'm filming. And so if I'm going to be moving something from here to there and here to there, and, you know, and, and it's something where I'm not just sitting and sewing, you know, where I can just move something or fudge it or, you know, whatever, stop in the middle and, and work on that, then that's a different story. You know, I mean, definitely. But when I'm filming, I tend to use a lot of wonder clips. <laughs> Definitely. Yep. Okay. So this is my Christmas morning quilt. It is not trimmed yet. I literally just took it off the long arm and I have to bind it. So don't mind that. Oh, I love it. This is, this is it. And I'll bring it up closely so you guys can see the quilting. Can you see that quilting? Yes. But now that I talked, it's going to show me. So you might, you need to talk again. Oh, can y'all see the quilting? <laughs> so, not sure how well it's showing. 
we can yeah. see it. I mean, it, we, you know, it's not crystal clear, but I can see the, I can see it. It depends on where. You I was going to say, let me grab one of the darker blocks that maybe it'll show better, but. I'll be honest. I'm actually seeing it on the white part better. Oh, are you? Yeah. Okay. Because it's reflecting in the light. Oh yeah. So that's it. That's my Christmas morning quilt. Let me see. Oh, that's so gorgeous. Yep. And then I use the, um, I put a label on the back and I use the white floral from the line for the backing. Love it. So there you go. <laughs> okay. Everyone is saying, Steph, it's gorgeous. Beautiful Thank quilt. You. Thank you. Okay, let me see what I missed here. <laughs> um, so let's see. Maria Rodriguez said that she signed up for your Notion subscription and the Acorn solution and pin. Awesome. Yeah, I saw that actually they're on their way to you already, hon. So yay. And the pink pins that you wanted, they're coming, I think, <clears throat> this week or next week. I got pre-cut dust in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa Louise says that she used clips on binding. Otherwise, she uses pins. Okay. I try not to do anything on binding. I pick, well, I, for the binding, I'll usually use the wonder clips for the corners. And other than that, I just wing it. <laughs> Let's see. Everyone is still um, just talking about all the love they have for your quilt. Oh, thank you guys. You're so sweet. <laughs> it really is gorgeous. That, that is, it, it came together beautifully. Thank you. The blocks were so nice when I put them together. They just, they went together so nice. I, I would totally make that again. Yep. Yeah, I would totally make it too. It's really, really pretty. Yeah. Terry said, Yvette, that light bright blue is your color. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, Angela's going back to cookie bacon. Send me some. No, I know, kidding. I want some cookies. <laughs> okay, so I brought a, you're going to laugh. I brought a, um, safety pin down because I finally found one. Oh, there it is. I was like, and now I can't find it. <laughs> so I can put my other tie in this little bag that we made. <gasps> oh, I should send you one of my, um, my little bodkins. Cause I got like 12. <laughs> that, that would be because it came in like a 12 pack, you know, it wasn't like, yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. That quilt. I just, I'm so proud of it. It's one of my favorite quilts I've ever made. It's gorgeous. You should be. Thank you. Um, do you hand bind or machine? Machine. machine. I don't hand sew anything. <laughs> yeah, I really don't either. What did I do with that? For goodness sakes. <laughs> I'm allergic to it. If that's allergic yeah. to quilting, I'm allergic to hand sewing anything. <laughs> Ooh, I have, you said the cinnamon rolls are on the last rise and then bake yum oh my goodness sherry says got a oh she got a caramel macchi macchiato mm. on the way home so yummy a girl after her own my, cup. my cup is has got um community house breakfast blend with creamer <laughs> That's what I'm at, drinking right this second. Okay, that's <laughs> and she wants yummy. to know if you're sipping on anything. Me? Yeah. Um, I had a coffee, which I finished. And then um, my hubby came down a little bit ago and brought me uh, a Diet Coke. So that was nice. Oh, that is nice. Yeah. 
I got to go out and finish Christmas shopping. See y'all later. Ooh, have fun, Marla. It's crazy out there. I'm Sarah, glad had, not me. <laughs> Sarah had a dance at our local mall again today. Another performance at our, a, a different mall than we did last week. And oh boy, I was like, I couldn't wait to get out of there. <laughs> I don't blame you. It was so crowded. <laughs> It was funny because you could tell it was like all mostly was men everywhere standing in line at the jewelry places. I was like, yeah, you all forgot about Christmas. You know, I, I know this is going to make me sound crazy, but I. Am I the only one who like really doesn't care? Like one way or the, listen, I like opening gifts. Don't get me wrong, but I I'm not like. Hungry for gifts. Do you know what I mean? I, like, I, I don't know. It's, it's maybe it's age or maybe it's, I don't know. I mean, I like getting gifts, but to me, it's, it's, I, you know, if I get them, I get them and definitely not jewelry. I don't know why it's just, I don't know. I'm, I, I change my, um, uh, tastes of what I feel like wearing at the time, like so often that it's, I'm, I, I do costume jewelry because I just, my tastes change or like I oh I, I like this now and I'll start wearing something for a while and then something else will come from rocks box and I'm like oh I'm gonna change my necklace out and I'm gonna yeah. you know now I'm gonna wear this more and I don't know it's like jewelry with like that it's so expensive and why I mean yeah. not why is it expensive I mean why why get it for me because I'm I'm just I, I change everything so often you know oh, that makes sense yeah yeah, because it, it's very interesting that, like you're saying, everybody, you know, all the men lined up to get the jewelry. Oh, it's hilarious because we went past the like Pandora store and there was like a line out the door because they're only letting so many people in, you know? Oh, yeah. At a time because of the COVID. And there was, it was all guys. I was like, this is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. That is pretty funny. It typical, too. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm happy with Roxbox. I really love Roxbox. Yeah, I do. I do too. Yeah. This necklace that I have on, which I don't know if you can see it from, but it's a little tree. Oh, can you see this? This just came. Yeah, from I saw it before I made a sound. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I'm frozen like that. That was terrible. No, that's okay. <laughs> that just came from Roxbox. And I actually, it was like, you know how sometimes you know that it's like a brand new one? Yeah. It was. And I was like, oh, I'm snapping that baby up. I love it. It's so pretty. Yeah. I have a rocks box on right now too. This one is just a little um, lock with like some little diamantos or whatever. on. Where am I? Oh, oh, I'm over cute. there. Do, 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 do. Anyway. <laughs> I like the sound. I, I change it. them too. You know, it's like, I don't. Um, yeah yeah I don't always buy the things but I bought this one because I really like it so yeah I probably buy more than I should <laughs> <laughs> yay look it I finished your bag finally because I got the string through <laughs> yay it's so cute I love, I love it. those bags I love it it's so cute <laughs> I'm so happy you finished it <laughs> I could not find a safety pin that day. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. We, I know we've got safety pins in this house. <laughs> Everybody's hiding them from you. I know. They didn't want me to finish my bag. <laughs> All righty. Uh, Sherry said, I totally get it, Yvette. I pretty much only wear earrings now. Gotcha. Yeah, and you know what? The funny thing is, like, what in the heck? How did my my presser foot is eight miles away? <laughs> how that happened? Of course, I came in here the other day and the cats had like been messing with all kinds of stuff. I mean, not like my anyway, the that the presser foot is moved, it does not surprise me because they were had all their toys down here. Oh, and I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, in fact, like right now, I don't even have any jewelry on. 
Like I just, a lot of times on the weekends, I won't put anything on. Well, I have my, my necklace on, but I never take that off. I, I, I just sleep with them and shower and everything. That's another reason why, you know, just something, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, (laughs) But I, I, like I have very, very, very mild. I don't want anyone to flip out, you know, and go, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. (laughs) Very, very mild psoriasis. But for me, the way it'll, it'll, uh, manifest is like if I leave on my rings and don't ever take them off I tend to like get um, rashes and stuff underneath so definitely when I get home I always take my jewelry off I mean obviously I usually wait until I'm done filming and that kind of stuff but um, I take everything off every night because okay. you know just because I have to otherwise I can have issues so yeah um, yeah. And so like sometimes on the weekends, I won't put it back on like all weekend or I'll put it on just to make a video and then I take it off, you know, but yeah. Karen Ruvain wanted to know if we start our binding on the front and go to the back or the back to the front. I start on the back and then flip it around to the front because I machine bind. I want the front to be the prettiest it can be. Yep. I do the same thing. I saw in the chat that a few people are totally ready for Christmas. All cre- presents bought, wraps, ready to go. How, what about the rest of you? Are you guys all ready? I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. I still have to wrap. And I haven't even received all of the gifts that I got for you and uh, Christy. So, um, yeah, I'm in trouble. Yeah. I, I have told to go. her and I'll tell you the same thing. Hopefully you'll get it by the new year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. That's okay. <laughs> well, I have both of yours. The last thing finally came in and I need to send it out on Monday. So... <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, my goal is, I mean, cause what I might do is just, you know, send what I have now and then send some, the rest later, because, um, I don't even know when some of those things are going to come in. Cause of course I, I kind of like go, Oh, I like that. And then I buy it. And you know, it's like two days from Christmas. I'm like, Oh, I wasn't really thinking that through. Yeah. (laughs) Joyce Baker said she's ready for Christmas. Awesome. Teresa said, all three of us do our binding the same. Yep. Um, Linda said, she's not ready. She still has shopping to do. Uh, Brenda Foley says, it's funny. I never hand bind either, but I'm sitting here hand binding pot holders. Uh, Tracy Albert said the remaining gifts she's making. So she has a week to finish a few bags. Awesome. You're welcome, Sharon. Oh, goodness. Kim is making cranberry orange bread, pumpkin blueberry bread, cherry eggnog bread, oatmeal cookies. Wow. And fudge, fudge. Also doing peppermint bark. We're coming to your house. Wow. <laughs> I'm tired just listening to the list. Right. <laughs> I'm going to bake on Friday with the kiddos. Um, we're going to make some sugar cookies. And what else did Sarah want to make? I think she wanted to make the peanut butter blossoms. You know, the one with the Hershey kiss in the middle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. Sounds fun. They wanted to do gingerbread, too. And I was like, you know what, guys? <laughs> Let's not go nuts. There's only six of us. Yeah, I have to work on Friday, but uh, I think we're going to get out early. Good. Heather Grant said, I'm two thirds done already. First party of the season in the books. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Teresa said, I'm trying to get back in the Christmas spirit. Aw. Well, you're allowed to be not right now. Yeah. 
sew binding on the front and always hand stitch and she's done with her Christmas shopping, Sandra Kinney said. <laughs> Kim said oh. that she would feed us if we went to her house. Oh, <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> Carrie said she has to wrap, but she's ready for it to get here so she can be in Georgia with her new grandson. Yay. Oh, that's nice. Um, I don't know where Jelly Bean is. <laughs> He's, he could be like downstairs sleeping on the sofa or something. I mean, I, I really don't know. <laughs> I don't see him here, though. He's not here right now in any of his little spots. He'll probably make an appearance when he's ready. <laughs> yep. Oh, wow. Hi, Kathy. I didn't say hi to you earlier. I'm sorry. Kathy's quilts and crafts. Oh, hi, um, Kathy. She said she's completely done with everything. Decorations and tree up and all presents wrapped in under the tree. Wow, that's awesome. That is awesome. I have just about all my family stuff done. I still got to get Yvette's and uh, Christy's present in the mail. Um, my kids' stuff is done. I wrapped it a couple weeks ago because they were trying to peek into our closet. So I was like, you know what? I better wrap it or they're going to figure it out. So that's done. So Thursday will just be, or Friday will just be, um, Prepping the meal for the next day for Christmas day and then making the cookies. This so do you know, what, crazy, do you know what movie you're gonna go see? I don't even know what's playing. I don't either. I haven't the slightest idea. Um, mm -hmm. I'll have to find something that I will enjoy falling asleep to. <laughs> <laughs> I think that sounds like an amazing day. I, you know what? It's what I like to do. I, I don't want to, I, I wouldn't even care if we had a ham sandwich for lunch. I'll be honest with you. I, I really don't care. I just, I do like going to the movies and I like having popcorn and a soda. Um, you know, that's what I want to do. Yeah, nice. I mean, we will have a meal. We will make something, probably ham or something. I don't know. But, um, yeah. but that part's not important to me, I'll be honest. Yeah. We don't make like the traditional Christmas dinner. We we our our uh, tradition is make a lasagna. Ooh! So I usually prep it the day before and then throw it in the oven the next day while like we're cleaning up from all the present unwrapping. Maybe I'll ask Jim if he wants a lasagna. I wouldn't mind doing that. Yeah, I think lasagna comes together pretty quick, actually. It does. It does, and I love that you can put it together the day before and put it in the yeah. fridge and then pop it in the oven the next day and you like so Christmas day I won't have to do any prep I can just do all the stuff on Friday and then sit around and do nothing on Saturday <laughs> there you go sounds good to me my jb hey buddy everybody's mm -hmm. just asking for you what you doing bud are you gonna come up here okay go on there you go oh delmarie's here hi delmarie hey delmarie everybody was asking about using minky to make an uh infinity scarf roars here from california hey um shelly clark is here hi hey shelly she said she just saw spider-man but she she said she thinks it would be hard to sleep through uh yeah i'm not a big fan of spider-man i think they're overdoing all of that stuff i it's just too much yeah. i um 
I will go and check out what's what's playing though. I'll find something. I mean, I guess if if Spider Man's the only thing that they have, I don't mind watching it. It's just not my first choice for sure. Yeah. Uh, Sharon Olive, hi there. Asked me if this is a row quilt behind me. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's, it's a row a quilt or what it is. It's a mystery quilt from Fort Worth Fabric Studios. Um, they're a quilting shop out of Fort Worth, Texas. And um, Monday they reveal what the layout is. So you make all the blocks and then on the last week, they give you the layout and you put them whatever order they say. So until they tell us, I don't know. When I started doing the blocks, I thought it was a row quilt. I start, started looking at it, but then I was thinking of ways they could be arranged and I don't think it's gonna be. Hi, Terry. Terry Peppers is here. Hi, Terry. Oh, wow. Del Marie said she made seven last year of those um, minky. Awesome. Yeah. 10 minute project. Wow. That's the best kind of project. <laughs> and they are lovely and warm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can attest. Terry said she's not doing anything on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. She thinks her family is getting together sometime between Christmas and New Year's, so she'll probably spend both days sewing. Yes. That sounds good. That sounds amazing. <laughs> I would totally do that, too. I think after our lasagna is done and the kids are playing with their toys, I'm going to come down and sew. I'm pretty sure I will, too. Yep. Hey, Julie Quilt. She's here. She said I'm late also, but glad I made it. Glad you made it too. Hi, Julie. Hi, Donna Richie. How are you? Hello, Donna. Kate is here. Check out the new movie Sing 2. Oh, I want to see that. The kids love Sing 1, so I think it might be cute. Oh, speaking of Kate, I wanted to show you guys. She sent me this and I had to show you because it's so cute. She made me this cute little mug rug with a little gnome. Oh my goodness. And on this side, she put, she put handmade by Kate, but on the little gnome up here, she put be kind. And I love it. Oh, I absolutely love it. And then she knew that, um, my husband, I talked to her about this was Swedish and she used, um, I think she said her grandmother's vintage hankies to make this little ornament out of like a Swedish fabric. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. Isn't that so sweet? What Thank a nice so gift. Much. That's a that very touched, nice gift. That touched my heart. I was like, I opened it. I couldn't believe it. So thank you, Kate. Oh, Netta said she's going to be sewing both of those days as well. Awesome. Cool. Shelly's going to her daughter's for Christmas Day. That'll be fun. Oh, the 2020 Jolly Box had minky scarf fabric pre-cut. Okay. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Donna Ritchie said baking powder puff cookies and some tea time tassies. Yum. Wow. Everybody's baking. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I would love it more if they was baking in my house, but you know. Teresa said, so cute. I love gnomes. I do too. And it's so adorable. <laughs> And the fabric that Kate picked looks very Nordic. So it, it's perfect for us. It's very cute. Hey, Donna. Donna Reno's here. 
Hello, Donna. I'm cutting fabric, just if anybody's wondering. <laughs> <laughs> We're just working on UFOs today. Yep. Got another one of my blocks done. Start another one. Do, 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 do. You know what size I need. What's that? That is. Uh, Del Marie said you, she thinks you could get three scarves out of a yard of minky fabric. Okay. Wow. That's pretty good. Oh my goodness. Kate said. I'm so glad you liked it. I, the gnome fabric is from, so yeah, I have six yards of it. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's a lot of gnome fabric. That's a lot of gnome fabric. I, it I is adorable. On that one. <laughs> uh, Nancy Gus said, I did a barn raising log cabin with a gnome in the center. I did it in grunge. Oh, that'd be cute. Um, Sharon Olive said, I love how kind and generous our community is. I do too. That, that's one of the things that I love the best about this journey. So I agree. Oh. <laughs> Terry said, Stephanie, you look so fancy to be sewing. I don't hardly ever use makeup. It's covering a lot of stuff today. <laughs> Stephanie has been running all day. Um, Sarah had a dance thing again today and she had dance class this morning so it was her last one and we get a two-week break i'm kind of very happy about that um <laughs> so i got up about seven o'clock this morning got her ready barely had the time to take a shower so the mom hair happened <laughs> and uh threw just a little bit of makeup on to cover all the face stuff <laughs> Took her to dance class, took her to her performance, got back about a half hour before I went live with you guys. So yeah, <laughs> thank you for saying I look fancy because I feel kind of gross. <laughs> I did get a shower, but I didn't get to wash my hair. So yeah. <laughs> probably TMI, you guys, guys probably didn't want to know I did wash my hair, but. <laughs> That's okay. It looks fine. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> we wouldn't have ever known. I'm almost done. <laughs> oh, okay. It said it was the end of the bolt sale. Okay. She's going to use it to make doggy mats for a vet clinic. Oh, that's nice. Mary said, I used to dress up at our business and had a lot of nice jewelry. Then I started working with kids and went to costume jewelry, which they loved. <laughs> and why not yeah I um I don't wear a lot of like fancy jewelry either just because I do have my kids and I never wear like I put on these dangly earrings today because I'm not around them right now but <laughs> I typically just wear like studs all the time because like I have one pair of diamond studs that my husband gave me for our fifth anniversary I wear those pretty much all the time and I don't really wear much else jewelry be unless it's costume jewelry because right. I'm sure you know Mary with kids the second they start tugging on stuff I would hate for that to be something super expensive and they break it so yeah exactly Donna said she just finished making five memory tie table runners I believe never again <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Vicky said, and for dinner, I grabbed a cardboard pizza. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, you guys are so sweet. Sandy said she likes my hair like this and, and Teresa said she likes my lips. I appreciate that. Thank you guys. Mary Kubacek is here. Hey there. She said, just joining in, finished quilting on my pillows from Stephanie's project box. Oh, those are so cute. I loved them. I want to see them done. <laughs> She took the table runner uh, fabric and turned it into um, pillows instead of a table runner. So, oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, I don't remember them, but you know what? It could be just, yeah. Me. I don't know. No. <laughs> Joyce I, Jordan I said, much. yeah. Joyce Jordan said, that's called super mom. Yeah. Moms have to sacrifice sometimes. Like Sarah used all the hot water because she had to wash her hair to get her hair the right way for dance. And I had about, no, I, there was like no hot water left by the time I got in there. So it was not a hair washing kind of day. Cause I don't wash this long hair when it's cold. <laughs> Can't blame you there either. Yeah. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. Yep. Mary said when I worked, it was the first thing that came off at home. I'm assuming she's talking about the jewelry. Yeah. Oh, Shelly, I'm sorry to hear that. She said she had a lot of nice jewelry in her house, but her house was burglarized in 2016, paid oh down the mortgage goodness. with the insurance money and gave up anything quote unquote real. Hmm. That's stinky. Yep, it is. Uh, Nancy Gus said, oh, she's talking to Kim Burris, sorry. Um, Joyce Baker said, what quilt will you never make again? Hmm. That's a good question. Sunbonnet Sue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can see you never making that again. Nope. Never making that again. I'm trying to think of what quilt I made. I don't think I've made a whole quilt that I would never make again. Like I don't hate anything. I have a wall hanging over here that I've shown you guys again that I would never make again. It took so long. It's it's beautiful, but I would never make it again. Never. So. You know, Heather, we had um, hot water on demand at our old house. And then we moved here about three and a half years ago now we built this house and we're they didn't give us that option and I wish they would have one of those um tankless water hot water on demand things oh uh, that's we missed that because now that our kids are our oldest two are getting older and they take showers on their own we can't control how much hot water they use okay when they took baths it was easy but um our daughter, she's got, well, you guys know, cause you've seen Sarah, but she's got real long hair like I do. Um, but hers is also curly. So it takes forever for her to like get the shampoo and conditioner out. She'll stay in there for, I'm like, I think you used all the hot water for us and the neighbors, Sarah. <laughs> so. I mean, I, I don't blame her. I understand it takes a lot to get all the stuff out, but Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, Rowena Goad said she just ordered the pattern for the quilt you just showed, the, the figgy pudding. Yay. It's a great pattern. I love it. I think I'm going to have to get it too. You can just talk to me. I'm getting FOMO now. 
<laughs> Joyce Baker said, I made a quilted satin crazy patchwork teddy bear. Never again. Oh, yeah, that would have been tricky. <laughs> Okay, Julie Quilt said she's sewing the hem smaller on her leaders to fit the red snapper rods in. This is for long arming. Cool. <laughs> Teresa Louise said, I usually only make a quilt pattern once. I, I usually do too. I don't think I've ever made one twice except for a jelly roll race, which I'm kind of done with those. We've I've done so many in the last couple of years that, yeah. Um, you have to take a break. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I, I never say never, but it's, you know, I'm kind of the same way too for like patterns, quote unquote. I don't, I have never repeated one before, but yeah, you know, not because I'm going, I hated that thing. You know, I just, <laughs> no, it's just because there's so many patterns. There's out there so many patterns. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why make the same one again? You know, that, I yeah. Mean, like I said, the jelly roll race, I think that um, the reason why for me, like, I don't, I don't make them back to back to back to back, but if yeah. I ever want to finish something quickly and, you know, then that's my go-to. Yeah. If I want to make something because I feel like I got to make something. I want to finish it. I want to feel like I finished something, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's what I'll go for. But yep. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oops. One of my stars jumped off the wall. <laughs> he leapt good. at you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's, I, it's not that I would never make a, I just, there's so many parents I want to do that I don't I typically redo them. But if I had to do one, it would be the figgy pudding just because the blocks came together so nicely. Yeah. I think that's a really good quilt for Christmas. You know, yeah. like that pattern is, it's really, I mean, I could see where you don't have to do Christmas, but it's nice for it. Yeah. It's a nice pattern. Um, somebody asked if that's the quilt, I'm sorry, I don't remember who said it because it was up a little bit, that you're working on for your class. Yes, it is. It's, um, um, hold on, Coral Reef. It's the Coral Reef pattern um, by Judy Niemeyer. Awesome. For the class. I was trying to hold it, but I got to go to ladies. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> um, Mary, you asked Yvette, I can answer this for her since she's gone to the ladies. If she has any family where she's at? No, she doesn't. Her, the closest family she has is her, I think it's her sister-in-law up in Maine. I think they're about a day's drive from them. Most of, but Yvette's family, most of her family is in Louisiana. Her husband, husband's family is kind of scattered. I think Maine, there's one of her, I think her brother-in-law lives actually here in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, and then his parents are in Arizona. So their family's kind of all over the place. One pattern I won't try again is Majestic Mountains. Thought I was going to have to open the Jack Daniels before I got it laid out. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> that does not sound good. Robin Boyd 
Stephanie, I was not aware you were doing a retreat. Yes, I am in April. Um, that's my first retreat. So we're going to see how that goes. I am planning a second retreat if I can get the location that I want later in the year, like late September, early October. Um, so I'm not sure where that one's going to be yet. I've looked at a couple locations that I really want. And one of them is got somebody else in the time slot, but they haven't put a deposit. And if they don't, then I get the next go at it. I'm looking in the Lancaster, Pennsylvania area. Um, so hopefully I can get something going. If not, then I'll do it again next spring as in 2023, but I don't want to wait that long. I'd like to do another one in the fall. So I really enjoy retreats. Um, I'm not as much, I don't like to lead them as much because you guys know I'm kind of like shy and quiet, but I have good friends that will help me. And, uh, but I, I like the planning part. I'm good at planning, organizing, get every, getting everybody where they need to go and all those things. So, um, yeah, I, um, am hoping I can get one out in September or early October. So Oh, Teresa said, I agree. I did that pattern a couple of years ago as the group's raffle quilt. What a pain. Oh, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> At least when they broke in, they didn't touch any of my sewing equipment. Mostly it was inconvenient to have to deal with the broken front door and having our cars rekeyed because they stole key fobs. Oh, well, that's good that they didn't touch your sewing stuff. Kathleen said, hope you do Lancaster. I'm just 90 minutes away. Yeah, I'm going to try to do that area. My first retreat is here in Ohio, um, not too far from where I live. So I want to do that one in a different location, but um, there's not a whole lot of areas in Lancaster where I wouldn't have to figure out how to do all the meals because the place I was looking at is pretty remote outside of Lancaster and there's like no close restaurants you could have catering brought in, but that's pretty pricey. So I'm trying to figure all that out. But once I do, I'll let you guys know. We're talking about retreats. Gotcha. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I was all like, now that I'm emptying out, I think I need to like get a water and <laughs> have some uh, yep. goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Nancy Gus is asking, how is Sweetie? Oh, little Sweetie. Yeah, she still comes for, usually she comes all, every day for like breakfast and lunch. And she'll sleep in the little heated house. Um, so she's doing well. I haven't seen her yet today, but it's been very um, like rainy and stuff like that. So I, she kind of like stays somewhere. I don't know where it's not my house, but there's somewhere she must stay when it's raining because she doesn't come till it's done. Oh, yeah. Meta says she wants to go to one of your retreats. Oh, that would be fun, Meta. That would be fun. Donna wants to know where's your first re retreat? My first retreat is going to be in, um, is some of, you know, we were talking about Lancaster PA that's Amish country for Pennsylvania. Basically it's my first retreat is actually in Amish country in Ohio, um, which is in Berlin slash Millersburg, Ohio area, which is in Eastern, not Northeastern, like central East, East central Ohio kind of closer to the PA border. So yeah, it's actually where, um, if you guys like Corey Yoder, that's where she lives. She lives in Berlin, Ohio. So it's a huge Amish community. It's the biggest Amish community in Ohio. Um, there's a ton of quilt shops. There's a bunch of quilt retreat places. So yeah, I'm real excited about that. Shelly Clark wants to cook for your retreat. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> you sure can. Um, actually, that was one of the things I was considering, believe it or not, is I was considering um, possibly having to do some of the cooking myself at one of the places I was looking at Lancaster because they have this gorgeous, beautiful kitchen, two big, huge, you know, refrigerators, ovens, all that stuff. But I was like, do I really want to cook? I just, you know, <laughs> I cook all the time for my family. So yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to find a place that has food or at least has food close by or yeah. That's the only part of retreats that makes me nervous because I don't like anything. Yeah. So I don't know. I think I'm going to have to like make sure I have stuff for grilled cheese or something. <laughs> well, that's kind of what I liked about it. And I thought, you know, maybe I would survey people and see if they're cool with just making simple things like that, you know, like sandwiches for lunch, grilled cheeses, stuff like that. And then maybe dinner, we find places to go out to or cater in to make it, you know, easier. Yeah. So, um, cause the one place I was looking at, I really love the location, but there's no, there's no restaurants close by. So we'd either have to get catering or like literally buy everything and make it ourselves. So, but I don't know if that's too much to ask people to like, here, come to a retreat, and make your own food. <laughs> <laughs> so just take a bag of goldfish, Judy L said. That's right. That Yvette will be happy with that. <laughs> well, I do occasionally need some regular food. Like, you know, occasionally. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty easy though. I'll just uh -huh. cook up a box of mac and craft mac and cheese. I don't care. I That's, mean I I'm down. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm very simple. Really. Yep. Just fill the hole. <laughs> Kathleen Ter Terrio said, I hope you do have a retreat in the fall. Stephanie, my friend and I were talking about going in April, but it was also, it was sold out so quickly. We will be on the ball next time. Yes. <laughs> I will announce it as soon as I have any more details. I need to go scout out a few more locations. So cool. Um, Donna wants to know where I'm located. I'm in Connecticut. Yeah, so that's the other thing. If um, my good friend Yvette wants to come, it's Lancaster is good too because it's kind of right in between the two of us. So, yep. Robin wants to know how my husband is. <laughs> how your husband is? He's sitting, he's sitting over there working <laughs> with his headphones on so yeah if every okay. once in a while you hear like somebody belt or something it's just because he doesn't know we're on live <laughs> oh goodness that's and, funny. you know as typical behavior <laughs> in our house <laughs> like i'm sure yeah. it is in everybody's house <laughs> he's a man yeah, you know, kind of things. I mean, <laughs> heck, if I didn't know that we were on live, I probably would be belching and farting all over the place, too. I just, <laughs> we all do it, you know? I mean, it just yeah. happens. And when you're comfortable in your own house, you just don't think about it. Sure, sure. Oh. So if you guys were going to join the Lisa Marie Swap, I just want to show you these examples really quick. These are two really quick mug rugs I made with Sarah. So they're super simple. She's 12 and she could make them. So you guys can do it. Yeah. I saw a bunch of people posting on Facebook. I don't think I can do this. You can. She is 12 and she made one. So, yep. You can do it. Plus, if you've never signed up for her swaps before, once you sign up, you get a form to fill out and it asks you what your comfort level is or your skill level is. So you can put beginner and she'll pair you with another beginner. So you don't have to feel like, you know, well, you shouldn't feel like that anyway, but you don't have to feel like, you know, yours isn't right. good enough. So. Yep. Yep. Oh, so Robin says, was he sick? Are you talking about 
Who, who is she talking to? Robin, who are you talking to? I thought, I thought she was talking to you, but now I'm not sure. Sarah. Yeah, because he's not sick. He, she says, I'm praying for him. Well, I mean, I'm sure he's happy that you're praying for him, but I don't know what's going on, but he's not sick. Okay. Maybe it was somebody else that she was thinking about. You want to pop up and say hi? Stand up. They can't see you. <laughs> hey, hi, really I'm like, what? Hi. <laughs> hi. Hi, Sarah. Go, Missy, vet your nails, and then you can run away. Oh. <laughs> sure what you did. That's pretty. No, oh, up here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just start talking and do it again because no one's going to see it. Oh. Oh, come here. We got to talk because they didn't see it because it's by who's talking. Sarah did her nails. She's been dying to do her nails because when you dance, you can't have anything on your nails. And she's like, I can't wait till my last performance is over because I can paint my nails. <laughs> They're very cute, sweetie. You did a good job. You did a great job. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kathleen said, made Stephanie's mug rug in less than an hour. My squares were already cut. Yeah, it goes so quick. So quick. Uh, Gina asked, and I think I saw this question earlier, but I forgot about it. Would you like to tell inquiring minds about your Valentine box? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> it is coming out in a few weeks. I'm waiting for the backing fabric to get here. It's running late. So I'm hoping I can get it out still on time. Um, or I might have to pick a different backing fabric than the one I picked. Uh, it's Sarah, S-A-R-A, no H. S-A-R-A, yeah, no H. Um, but that's all I'm going to tell you. They're surprises. They're they're kind of like so sampler at other places where you don't know what's coming. So I did design the pattern myself. So I hope you guys like it. So, yeah. You read on YouTube that he was sick. Oh, what? Who would have said that? That's weird. That is weird. And she's like, well, I'm glad he's not sick. Me too. I'm yeah. glad he's not sick either. Um, I don't know who would have said that. I haven't said that he was sick. Yeah. Um, but he's healthy and fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate the the prayers, just thinking that he might have been. So thank you very much. I, I do appreciate that. Uh, Mary said, are you teaching projects at your retreat or is everyone just doing their own things? Okay, at my first retreat, we, I am, um, actually Yvette's coming. She's going to teach one of the projects. She wrote the pattern, so she's going to teach it. I'm, I wrote a pattern that I'm going to teach. And then we're doing a third project that is not really like a project that needs to be taught. It's just kind of a fun thing. So, um, there's going to be three projects. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Kim, the video is, I think it was my Vlogmas. Oh, goodness, I don't remember what day. Maybe the 10th day that we did the mug rug. It was a Friday. I know that. Um, Kate says, uh, say hello to Sarah with no H at the end. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was cute. <laughs> Sarah, no H. Uh, let's see. Oh, Heather, you got to meet your new niece today. She's such a sweet baby. Aw, how fun. Babies are such a blessing. How many days is my retreat? Okay, so it starts on Friday and we leave on Monday. Like we have to, I think we can sew till noon on Monday. So three days, I guess. Yeah. Michalina says we're looking great. Aww, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Did she just get here? I didn't see her come in. Is she well? I'm assuming she just came in. I've only okay. seen her name for the first time right now. Thank Nicolina you. A. Yeah. Yep. Mary said, "Sounds like fun." Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Um, I'm super excited about. It. Like I said, it's the first one that I've organized. I've been to them before, and luckily I have like Yvette coming to help me and. Um, one of the gals who's attending is flying in early because she's flying in from Texas. We've got a few people actually flying in, one from Texas, 
one from Colorado, one from California. Um, and I think most of the other people are driving. They're close enough where they can drive. But uh, the lady coming in from Texas is coming in a day early. So I'm going to pick her up from the airport because she's flying into the airport that's near my home. And she offered to help too. So I'll have a vet and her to help me set up. So that's, that's real nice. So I'm not on my own. I've got some good friends. You do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Michalina says she's new and she's watching with her mom. Oh, yay. Hi. I'm excited about that. Oh, Gina wants you to show your reindeer um, nails. Oh, I don't know. Can you guys see it? Am I too close, too far? No, I can see it. It's so cute. They're adorable. And there's a little snowflake next to it. I think yeah. too close. I love them. They're so cute. So Michalina, welcome to the channel. Um, a lot of times, most of the time we'll sew something. Tonight we're just kind of chitty chatting and we're supposed to be working on like unfinished projects, but I think I'm talking more than I'm doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually kind of, you guys can't see because I have my camera up a little higher right now. My space is a disaster. <laughs> After this last week of opening boxes and working on projects, I have stuff everywhere. So I'm trying to kind of clean while I'm talking to you guys <laughs> so I can see my work surface over here a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you come back. We have a lot of fun. So bowl cozies are the microwave bowl things easy to make yep yes they are very easy to make um if you want to put them in the microwave though just make sure you either there's a batting that's specific that you can use in microwaves and yeah, called, uh wrap and zap i'll show thank you thank you i was like i know somebody's gonna know the name because it's not coming to me right now wrap and zap or I only, yeah i but, only know because i have some right here Oh, so, there you go. So there you go. Perfect. It's on brand wrap and zap and you can get it in this little package. Um, yeah. So that's it. Just use that. Yeah. Perfect. So there you go. I'm glad if it had that, or if you don't have that or don't have access to it, you can do it with just cotton batting, but make sure you only use cotton batting, cotton fabric, cotton thread. Don't put any kind of poly in the microwave. It will melt. <laughs> yeah. So Make sure there's no poly scrim in your cotton batting. Um, make sure it's a hundred percent cotton. So, yep. yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Her nails were hand painted. Yes. Beautiful. What do, I do with the black fabric? Linda Parson says she's going now. Good night. Hi, Linda. Oh, Kate. Yes. It just came in today. I was gone today. But I got a big box of Moda when I came home and that Peacoat grunge is here that you wanted. So I will contact you when we're done. I tried bowl cozies and the edges were so thick. Do you cut the batting a bit smaller than the fabric square? I do. So like, yeah, I'm just going to make up numbers right now, but let's pretend that your fabric squares are 10 inches. I cut my batting nine inches. So yes. See, I had to dig through this pile over here, guys, because I just found the fabric for my binding for my Christmas morning quilt. I was looking for this so I can cut it and <laughs> bind my quilt. Glad I'm cleaning. <laughs> oh, and then I don't think I ever showed this because I totally meant to and I forgot, but Shelly Stewart, and I'm not sure if she's here tonight. I don't think I've seen her, but she made me this cute little bag for our swap with Yvette's group. And it is just so cute. Oh my goodness. Isn't it adorable? Yes. And she put this, I don't know if you guys can see this, but the zipper is like rainbow. It's so cute. It's gorgeous. Yeah. I love it. Are you going to be doing another swap soon? In your group? Oh, girl. Uh, yes. I mean, the answer is definitely yes. But right now, listen, I, I'm i sure everybody is extremely disappointed in the way things are going 
right now just because my life is crazy right now. I mean, I know I'm always saying that, but like right now just seems like even more so because of, you know, trying to downsize the shop and everything. Um, and so I'm, I'm very grateful for all of the orders that I'm getting in really am, but it's a lot of work and, you know, with having to work full time and you blah, 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 yeah. you know, I mean, you vets cry me a river story. I know. Um, but I think it's just better if I hold off a little bit, unless I can find somebody to kind of like manage the group. Um, and it's like, I know that I have people who would help and do that, but it's also like just every single thing. It's like, feels like it just piles on top of you and on top of you, and on top of you. And, um, I know I shouldn't talk about these things. I should just let it be a mystery to everybody my whole life. But it's just, you know, it's just the fact of what it is. And, I, and I'm getting older. <laughs> that's just who you are though. That you're real with people. And that's why we love you. So. I know, I know, but you know, it's like some things should probably be a mystery. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but the answer is yes. I mean, there is like, I, the God's honest truth is that there is so much that I wanted to do with piecing it real. And because I spent so much time trying to make this all a career for me, um, you know, I just really took on too much. I mean, that's basically, you know, the long and short of it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But it's gonna get better. It's it, it. I I'm going up from here. So I know. yeah, I know it is. You're amazing. Um, somebody asked if I got. Oh, you're welcome for the grunge special. A few people said thank you for the grunge special. You are welcome. Um, and somebody asked if I had more winter white. Yes, I got some more winter white in today. I have not, like I said, unboxed it yet. Um but it's here. I just need to put it in my shop. <laughs> That's probably out of all the grunge, my favorite grunge. Cause it's, you can use it with, um, almost anything. If you're looking for a cream, cause it's not like the other grunge where there's like a whole bunch of crazy colors on it. Not that I don't like that, but not, it doesn't have any other kind of crazy colors. It's pretty much cream. So yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I, I get it. That is so true, Christian. Christian Jonas said, it's so easy to get involved and overcommitted when you love doing so many things. That is so true. I know. It's hard for me to say no. I mean, if I'm, that's honest truth. It's, it's really hard for me to say no to a lot of things. And um, I'm starting to, I don't know. It took a long time for me to kind of learn my lesson, I'll tell you. Um, and I need to remember that I'm one person and, um, yep. and that I need to, you know, I need to do less things better instead of more things and just not able to um, keep to commitments you know, because I, I just overextend. I do that a lot. I do it. I have always done it a lot. And so, um, I, I just, I need to start remembering that quality is better than quantity and it's been a hard lesson, but I'm, I'm, I think I've made it. We're going to cross fingers on that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm hoping I have. Uh, Joanne said she got her grunge order. She loves it. Great. Awesome. 
Let's see. Uh, Donna Rito said, nice to see you all stay, stay safe. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Uh, is she leaving? I'm assuming so. She didn't say, but yeah. Okay. Teresa said, I did a video with a bowl cozy. Oh, go watch Teresa. Yay. Oh, cool. Kate said, I commend all of you for doing the vlog, Miss. It's a lot of work. It has been fun. I haven't seen such dedication before. Thank you. Well, you said that a little too soon because I didn't put one up for yesterday yet. They'll forgive you. It's this all good. Week, this week <laughs> totally got me. I mean, this this has been a pretty tough week. Um, well, tough in, in not tough, like it's been hard. It's just as far as um, like getting things ready and, and stuff like that. Cause I really wanted like last night to go very well. Um, so that was a lot of, a lot of work there. And I just kind of, I just kind of like hit the wall last night, <laughs> but I'm going to catch up. I'm going to do two videos today. So we'll have, we'll have it all caught up. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Maria said, for those of us that are new and had never been to a retreat, is there a video showing how to pack a sewing machine bag properly and what to bring if going by plane? There is actually go, just go to Google and type in, uh, traveling with my sewing machine. And it, it, there's a, I think there's at least a couple really good ones that you can read up on. Awesome. I'm glad you knew that answer. Well, because I had looked it up because, um, I didn't know if I was going to like fly to your retreat or what I was going to do. Yeah. But instead I'm going to do like, uh, you know, like two days of travel or something like that, especially cause I'm going to go early to help you and all of that kind of stuff. So I didn't do it, but, um, oh, and I think I was also looking at it because I'm doing the Judy Niemeyer one and I didn't know if I wanted to bring my own mm -hmm. machine. Um, but I ended up deciding to just rent one of theirs. Mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, that's a long way to fly with your machine. I would be a little worried. Well, I think like when you go on and you type that in, um, mm -hmm. there are like, there's somebody who will tell you how to do it as a carry on. <laughs> now, mm -hmm. personally, like my machine's heavy. It's computerized. Um, so there is, I, I would not want to take it on. And it terrifies me to check it. So I'm like, okay, oh, I'm yeah. just, <laughs> it's just yeah. the whole thing was, I don't think it was ever going to work out for me. I was like, nope, nope, nope on all of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I hear you. Oh, I opened a small motor box that I got today. This came in. Isn't this cute? It said, so this is Christmas. I love it. <laughs> so cute. That's cute. Yeah. I was like, oh, too bad they came so late, but that's all right. Right. Yo, yo. I just got um, some stuff that I had got for Christmas as well. Like I had been thinking, um, cause like in my orders, I, if, if people like spend like a certain amount of money with me, I'm like, I just feel like they deserve a thank you. That's just me. I don't know. I'm weird. And so all I had, I had seen these little, um, those little notepads that you could put in your purse that have like the little magnetic thing or whatever. And they were just cute little things. I mean, it's not like, uh, you know, I'm going to put a hundred dollar bill in there for people, but you know, and there were some Christmas ones. Well, I just got them today. <laughs> I was just uh -huh. like, well, that's we, you know, I was like, that's just kind of lame. I don't know. Like, yeah. Why? Anyway, I don't know. They're just so late with shipping everything. Yeah. I guess I kind of didn't think those things would be coming from China. You know what I mean? Like, I just kind of thought those things would be. Yeah. Well, obviously, I wasn't thinking it all through. <laughs> uh -huh. I mean, they're still cute. You can still use them. It's just, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can still drink out of the Christmas cup, you know, but it's just sure. the idea of it. Do you know what I mean? I know I, I'm with you. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, Stephanie Smith said, I love my to-do bag. Can you can strap that stinker down like a tank and a C-17? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love mine too. That's what I take my machine in when I travel. But I've never attempted to take mine on a plane. My machine's pretty big. I don't think it would fit as like a carry-on under right. the seat. 
and I would never let them touch it and put it up in the bin. <laughs> so I would probably have to take my small machine if I ever had to fly with my machine. Yeah. Okay, hey, you gotta you gotta banish me from doing projects. I've got projects everywhere over here. I'm like cleaning up as we're talking, and I'm like, wait, you're trying you're trying like, to get me to convince you not to do a project? <laughs> oh my goodness, I found like three projects I didn't even know I had over here, and I'm just like, no, not another project. <laughs> Girl, if you saw this room and how many projects are laying all over the place, it's crazy. <laughs> it's absolutely. You need. 48 hours in a day so we can finish them all. <laughs> At least. <laughs> oh, I did find some yummies that somebody sent me for my birthday, though. You want one? Yes. <laughs> I don't even have to know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> somebody sent me some C's candies. Oh. Yum. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could share with you guys. I know, right? Yeah. I would take some. <laughs> I'm pretty much always ready to eat something. Right? <laughs> I'll eat something. Hey. <laughs> I'm hungry right now. Anybody else? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what you got there? <laughs> one day. We'll have Wonka Vision one day. One day. Yep. We need it. Okay, I really need to clean up this place. I've been looking for this tag all over and I just found it. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> One of the last, um, from the tagged, the last tagged thing. Oh yeah. That's yeah, I was looking for this to put it on the small Christmas morning table runner that I made and I couldn't find it anywhere because one on the bottom with the trees, I thought it'd be perfect. I right. just found it. But I already finished that table runner and bound it and everything. So <laughs> if you get a uh, really good matching, um, if you get a really good matching thread, you could probably put it on. I could. Yeah. If it's for you. You know what I mean? Especially if it's just for you, then yeah. it's not that big a deal. Yeah, that's true. I could put it like on the corner and yeah iron it there and then hand stitch it a little bit. I don't like to hand stitch. Why do you have to hand stitch it? Yeah, that's true. I guess I wouldn't have to. I mean, if, if your thread matches nice, nice, I don't see any, any reason why you couldn't just put it on there. That's true. Uh, that's a good question. I have no idea how much and what type of machines can you rent? I have no idea. It you depends on what area you're in. Um, there are, you just, wherever, whatever area that you're in, you really need to just look it up. You could probably even like, um, if you know of a quilt shop in that area, you can call them and ask them if they know if they rent machines or if they know where machines can be rented in the area. I mean, that's where I would start if I were looking to do that. Oh, Kate said, Yvette, did you get those crazy tags that said things like, I really made this? Um, I didn't get them that said, I really made this. I got the ones with a lot of bad words on it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's by, um, gosh, what's the name of that company? I know that you can get them. Um, you can get them at Crimson Tate. Uh -huh. She started selling them. I want to say that the name of the of the company that makes them is like Kate and the Machine or Kylie and Kylie and the Machine. That's what it is. Kylie and right. the Machine. Um, and it'll say, I mean, you can get some without bad words on it. You can get it like um, 
there's one, and I think I had talked about them before. It says something like um, made with love and a lot of curse words or something like that. It, it, and they're just cute. And there are some that will have the F word on it. So if that offends oh. you, just don't buy those. But it's <laughs> meant to be cute. You know, it's meant to be, you know. Yeah, tongue in cheek, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah. have some that say um, just handmade. They have some, I mean, not all of them are risque is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And they're cute. And, you know, it, they're just little fold over um woven labels so they kind of get sewn into like the binding or something like that or like if you're making clothing it would get it would get sewed into the back of the inside of the shirt or you know whatever that kind of thing Mm -hmm. um but there's they are super cute awesome and I think there's only like a couple that have a bad word on it. It's oh. not like a, a whole bunch, but it's, but sh- they're, they're really cute. And um, I think probably more people than not like that kind of thing. I was going to mm-hmm. say, if you keep it for yourself or if you give it to the right kind of person, they probably think it's hilarious. So. Exactly. I mean, like if you yeah. gave that to me, I would, I would probably hang it on the wall. I have no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's cute to me. It's funny. You know, it's meant yeah. to be, like you said, tongue in cheek, just funny. Um, yeah. So if you have that kind of attitude about it, you might like them. <laughs> yeah. uh, Stephanie Smith said, I ordered some labels from Sweetwater and love them. Oh, good. Um, I showed those on my channel. I love them too. And I know Yvette loves them. I order everything from them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Stephanie said, I need some labels with a seamstress pulling her hair out. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh Judith Schuler said I found lots of great quilt shops in the Lancaster area. My sister lives in Lidditz and she asked if we were going to do one in Lancaster, she'd be interested in coming. So a couple of places I was looking, one was just north of Lidditz and one was in it was on the east side of Lancaster and the name is totally escaping me right now. But um yeah, that would be the area, definitely. And it may just come down to you if I have to find a big house to rent and then we have to go find food. We have to forage. (laughs) I don't think that's such a bad thing. No. If the space to sew in is really nice, I think that's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. To be able to have room and not feel like you're on top of somebody or, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Because that's my only pet peeve. I have taken classes where it's like, you know, you get there and you can tell that they've sold. I mean, not that I don't understand that they need to make money. I get it. But it's like, I have... I have been in like at a quilt class where I practically feel like I have to, I, I can only get in and out of my chair like this because we're all yeah. so close together, you know, and then you, you got no place to put anything. And I, you know, so that kind of thing, it, it, it annoys me if I show yeah. up and there and you're that, cl- I mean, that's just ridiculous. It is. It is. I mean, because I get that you're trying to make money, but for goodness sakes, like I can't even move like, yeah then I, I'm just frustrated and I want to just leave, keep my money. I don't even care. I just want to yeah. leave because I, I mean, if I wanted that, I'd just be in my house, you know? Yeah. Just... <laughs> no, I went to a class one time and that was the last class I've actually taken. I took a class and I don't remember, I think it was like a, for a bag or something to learn how to sew. And we were like that. And they literally gave us like a sack on the back of our chair to put our stuff in. Because there was no table room. Oh my gosh. I was like, this is not good. I like my personal space. Well, like the last one that I went to, it was not only did I not have any, because the, you know, listen, here's the thing. I, I, I am one of the people who is going to completely understand because I used to be like almost 270 pounds. Okay. But basically not only did it make me uncomfortable, but the poor woman behind me who was overweight, 
and I'm overweight too. We get, get, <laughs> listen, <laughs> I got plenty extra, but it's like the, the both of us, it was so uncomfortable because yeah. she felt like she couldn't move. I felt like I couldn't move. You had no place to put any of your stuff. And it was, it was too much. And I just was like, I, I, I kind of wanted to go. I wanted to go. Yeah. And I, because it's, it was too uncomfortable. And then it was like, once I got out of my chair, cause you'd have to get out to go and press or whatever. Um, cause you certainly didn't have any room for that where you were then to, to wait, to get back in, because maybe she's pushed her chair back now because now I'm not there. So she's pushed back a little bit. So she could be, she's not sewing like this, you know? Yeah. And then I come back on, I'm oh, sorry. Can I get back in my chair? Yeah. <laughs> you know, just, yeah. I, it's true. So that's the, you know, and that I'm glad that, you know, I know that you went and you were looking at that kind of thing. And oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, especially I think if you've been to the class to any kind of class like that and been frustrated, you yeah. know what to look for. So I appreciate the way that you look for retreat centers. Well, like and that's that. why, like, I'm taking a while to find one because I have found a couple, but they were they're very small and tight like that. And I was like, nope. Um, the one that I'm doing this spring, we all each get a five foot table of our own, and even with all the tables set up, there's still room to move around. You're not on top of the next person. Right. So, yeah, I was like, we need to have all of our stuff. I mean, yeah, yeah. It just, yeah. And I don't even understand, like, you know, in any quilt shop, I don't understand why they would even ever do that. I mean, they know. They well, have you, to like know. you Come said, they're, they're trying to put more people in seats, which I understand, like you said, well, you have to make money, but... Too, but then if everyone gets so frustrated with you that they're never going to come to your classes again, right. they're sitting on top of somebody. Yep. You, you know, just hit the everybody. nail on the head. Yeah. I was just going to say that you just hit the nail on the head. I wouldn't, I've never gone back there again because I took two I classes. I'm not going to go back there. I, took I thought two that classes. the people were wonderful. The, yeah. the ladies who were so, and there was actually a couple of men. I appreciated that. Um, I, I thought everybody was really nice and we all worked well together. That had nothing to do with it, but I can guarantee you I'm not going back there. Yeah. Not going I, took, back there. I was like the last one to show up. So I got like the, oh. the face with like, like I said, I, I couldn't move. I couldn't even move. And yeah. I, it was, it was horrible. Yeah. Yeah, I took two classes from the place that we were squished. And the first one was actually um, a long arm class, which I took years ago. And oh. um, that one, they were teaching us on five foot frames and they had us all like frame to frame to frame. So we were all right next to each other. And there again, like we needed scissors and we needed, they were teaching us how to use um, rulers on the long arm. And we had nowhere to put anything. You either had to put it on the floor or put it on your chair. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the next time I was like, okay, well maybe they figured they couldn't fit like a little table. I don't know what I was thinking, but I was like, okay, well maybe it's just cause of that. I don't know. So then I took that little bag class and say if we were, we had a table obviously to sit at cause we were sewing, but we literally had enough room for our machine. And that was it. I was like, okay, this is crazy. And I haven't gone back since. So that is crazy. You're right. It doesn't do them any good to squeeze more people in if it turns everybody off. So, well, then the other thing was they had two trash cans for the whole room. So there was one trash can that was over like next to the, well, both trash cans were right next to the pressing area. Um, Mm -hmm. but like one was on this corner one was on that corner. And so every time you had trash, you either had to like make this little pile like in your lap or something until you had enough that you had to go bring it over or you had to get up every time to go chuck your trash and I was just like oh. you know if you had just told me that you didn't have trash cans for everybody I would have brought my little turtle right yeah or something yeah. I mean you, but you have you don't think oh they're not going to give us any trash cans I mean it was like right. I mean, it was every little thing right. I just kept thinking this is so awful on every level and I don't get it yeah. I mean, they all sew too. It's not like they don't sew. Yep. You know what you need. <laughs> Absolutely. I just want to say a quick hello to Teresa McBrayer and somebody else came in. Oh, Karen. Karen Rabbis came in. Hi, guys. Hello. Oh, and I'm going to say your name wrong. I'm sorry. Melina Montoya. She came in. Hey there. You didn't miss anything. We're just 
uh, we well, we're just we're, to work, we're just chatting. We're supposed to be working on UFOs. We're talking too much. I'm cleaning my space up a little bit um, because it got to the point where I don't know if you guys ever get to this point where you've done so many different things that you've got stuff sitting everywhere and you're like, I can't do anything else because I can't function because there's too much stuff everywhere. So I'm at that point. So I'm kind of cleaning up my space over here. I was so. at that point probably a year and a half ago. <laughs> the re Sally said the retreat she's been to has had a paper bag taped to the side of the table well that's okay that's better than nothing Listen, i would have rather had that yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh <laughs> stephanie said uh what drives me nuts is people that bring their entire sewing room when they do not need like three to four tools <laughs> that's true yeah i agree shelly she said they need to offer more sessions of the class if they're that full yep yep um but they would have had to pay the person doing the class more as well. So yeah. I guarantee you Again. there's a reason why they're not doing it. That's true. Yeah. It's all about money. Yeah. Uh, can you rent a machine at a retreat? It depends on what retreat you're going to. Um, the one that Yvette was talking about renting a machine, she's going to take a class directly from Judy Niemeyer, the person who writes all those gorgeous paper piecing patterns um, at her like retreat center ranch thing that she has. Now right. she's got this whole like gorgeous center, right? Most people don't have that. Um, most people that organize a retreat like myself, we're like renting a space. Um, so like, unless there's a local quilt shop that's willing to rent a machine, um, there is one person that is coming to my retreat that asked about renting a machine, but I'm probably just going to loan her my secondary machine because I haven't been able to find a shop around there that rents machines. So, yeah. 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 And I don't mind doing that because, um, honestly my second machine, I don't use it very often. So I wouldn't mind somebody using it and putting it, you know, giving it a little bit Peace. of use. Yeah. <laughs> I love this machine so much that I use all the time that I hardly ever use the other one, but this is a straight stitch only, like I've said before, but that one has like all the stitches. It's got all the decorative things, the zigzag, the everything else. There's nothing wrong with my, that machine. I like it. It's another Janome, but it sews, I think it's 800 stitches per minute. And when you're used to 1600 going back to that, it's like, oh my goodness, you're this like a turtle. <laughs> When it's really not that slow because I've actually taught people how to sew on that machine because I've taught a few people how to sew and they've had no problem. It's just that I'm so used to going so fast that, yeah. Kate said, so this is the perfect opportunity to create a retreat that will have the things that you didn't have at the ones you went to. Exactly. But I didn't have that much trouble at my retreat. It's more of the classes that I had trouble at, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely know what I want and what I don't want. So, and when I talked to the place that I'm having the retreat at, I made sure to negotiate all those things that I wanted. So, yep. Shelly said, Shelly Clark said, you should see my car when I go to summer retreat. I take several machines and lots of projects, but it's a week long sewing camp. Six friends that get together every year. Oh, that sounds amazing. It does sound fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm thinking the next retreat though, that is just going to be a bring your own project. If we have to, if I find a place where we have to kind of make our own food and stuff. Yeah, I don't, I like those. I, I like those kind of retreats. Yeah. Yeah. If I do two a year, I think I would do one where one of them is a pro is a retreat where we teach people things. And the next one is just a bring your own. We'll 
sew for four days yep. straight without stopping things. <laughs> yep. Sounds good. Sounds good yeah. to me. Yeah. <laughs> Shelly said they've been doing that for about 20 years, that get together with her friends. That's awesome. Uh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Have a good night, Polly. Thank you for coming. Karen said she's never been to a retreat. Oh, you'll have to try one. Nancy Guest said, how long is your retreat? It's uh, three days, three, four, three and a half days, about yeah. Teresa McBriar said, I would rather have more things than what I need. So I don't have to buy or borrow anything. Yeah. Actually, when I went to the retreat in Alabama last summer, I took way more than I needed. But what I just did is I just left a lot of stuff in my car. And then I was like, Oh, I need that ruler. So I went out and got it. I didn't haul it all in. But I agree, like, I wouldn't want to bring my entire sewing room, but it, you know, it doesn't hurt to bring things that you think you might need. And that's the one good thing, I guess, if you're working on a project of your own, you kind of know based on the project, like what rulers you might need or what thread you might need or this or that. So Stephanie Smith said, I'm becoming more into bring your own projects. Yeah. I really enjoyed the retreat that I went to where we brought our own because I had several days with, I didn't have to be a mom. I didn't have to be a cook. I didn't have to take care of anything. I could just sit in my PJs and sew. <laughs> yep. I didn't have to pay attention to a class. I didn't, yeah. Not that that's a bad thing. I do like retreats where you learn something too, but so that's why I'm thinking if I do two a year, one will be projects and one will be like UFOs. So yeah, we, a lot of us have way too many UFOs. So yeah. Yeah. And I built into my retreat, um, time. We have three projects, but the one is going to be done in the session. The other two may not be, but I built in time where people can free. sew. so like after the day is over, the room's going to be open pretty late so people can sew and in the mornings and in the evenings. So they should be able to get quite a bit done. Yeah. Rowena said, I ordered the winter white grunge from you and I got it today. Awesome. Yay. Um, Stephanie said, I went to one last year where I didn't know anyone had a blast and learned tons from the other people I met. That's awesome. That is good. Yep. Perfect. Kathy's quilts and crafts said, what projects are you and Yvette making at Stephanie? Are you talking about right now? Yvette's working on her Judy Niemeyer quilt for her class. And I'm sitting here talking to you guys, cleaning up my space a little bit. And I am so excited because I can actually see the top of my cabinet over here. <laughs> so that's amazing. It is amazing because if the pot, if you guys would have seen the pile, you would have thought I was completely ridiculous. And it was completely ridiculous. <laughs> and now that I've moved all the stuff, I can see that I need to dust. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I forgot I had this over here too. Look what I found, Yvette. I found Ooh. some holly berry fabric. <laughs> I totally forgot I had this in this bin over here. Yay. Got to make something with that. Yes, right now. Okay. Yeah, Kathy was talking about right now. So, yep. So, um, I am sort of working on this. I kind of, you guys will see this done eventually. I've been kind of dabbling here and there. When I have time, I'll put like one block together. So, I've got all the center parts made. I just have to put the pieces around. 
So I've made a few of those. I did one of these tonight. Remind me what that's for. That's just a quilt I'm making with the cozy up fabric from um, Coriotor. Okay, it's beautiful. I like that. Thank you. I just wanted to make something um, with her fabric and I hadn't found a pattern that I loved, but I found this one from another designer and I was like, that looks good. <laughs> <laughs> that worked. Yeah. Julie Quilt said, what grunge is all white, no cream in it, pure white on white. Is there a grunge like this? No, there's That's no grunge. That grunge is. <laughs> pure white, white. It, it, there's not no such thing. The closest to white you're going to get is the, um, it's listed two ways. So it's kind of funky, but it's either white paper or paper white, but it's the same thing. That's the closest to white you're going to get. And there is slight, like a very, very light gray in it, but it's as white as you're going to get. I use it for a lot of things. Actually, I've got, let me see if I've got something. I can grab this over here and show you. Look through here. So this is, um, I used white grunge on this, the paper white, but as you can sort of tell, and I will hold it closer, it is real, real hard to see the underlying color or the over the other color. It looks white. Yeah, it does look white. So it's like this slightest, tiniest bit of light gray on it. So Oh, cinnamon buns are out of the oven. Yay. Vicky sent them. I want a cinnamon <laughs> bun. I know. Steely said I can smell them from here. <laughs> Uh, Julie Quilt said, okay, I just watched your video and I wasn't sure. Yeah, the one I just, that, that little wall hanging I just showed you, that's that white paper, paper white. Um, but as you can see, it, it reads white. It doesn't, you don't really see the other color in it. You can, obviously, if you look right at it, but it really reads white. Yeah, Teresa, I know you like the, white, the paper white grunge. I love it too. That and the winter white and they're, their black, the black dress. I love all those colors. So yeah, so yeah, it's coming on in just a few minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, Karen Cox, hey, hey, Karen. She said, how do you store your leftover fabric when you're done with the original project? Well, I try not to have leftovers <laughs> and if I do I usually donate them or send them to somebody who likes scraps because I'm not a scrap girl um I love the look of scrap quilts I just recently long-armed a scrap quilt for somebody that used hundreds of like two inch scrap squares of all kinds of different Christmas fabrics it was absolutely gorgeous um I absolutely love the look of them. I don't want to do it. Um, I know that's going to sound absolutely insane, but I, no. huh? No, it doesn't. <laughs> okay. So um, I, my brain likes things to go together. I like symmetry. I like the lines that go together, <laughs> the fabric lines. Um, that wall hanging I just showed you guys the only reason I didn't use the white from that line is because it wasn't available it was hard for me to put that together although I love the way it came out it's just hard for my brain to um I just like things to go together I like matchy matchy I like symmetry so yeah it's I don't like scraps because I wouldn't I wouldn't know how to put them together to make them look good 
and I know that's the point of scrap quilts. Like they don't need to necessarily go together, but for me, they do. <laughs> so I guess that was a long answer. I don't keep scraps. <laughs> I don't either. Yeah. But I do know people who love scraps. So I tend to save bags of scraps. And when I have a whole like bag, if they want them and are willing to pay the shipping, I'm happy to ship them to them. So. Yvette, is that the mini Oliso iron that you're using? Yes. Vicki Lemire says, I like scraps. I love scrap quilts. I think they're beautiful. I just, I can't come to make one myself. That's the same thing with Civil War quilts. I think they're gorgeous. I've seen so many at quilt shows, hanging in shops I absolutely love, but I don't love brown as a color in general. So I don't, I can't go and buy it and make my own. But when I see them made, I think they're beautiful. So it's just a thing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm the same way. Yep. Kate said, I like to sew all the strips together and make a, a scrappy square to include on the back. That's a good idea. Uh, Maria, that's a good question. She said, what is the farthest away that you have ever driven for a retreat? Um, the one I went to last summer in Alabama, that was a almost 11 hour drive. That was rough. <laughs> yeah. I'll never do it again. That was me too. Yeah. Was it difficult to long arm the scrappy quilt? No, um, it wasn't because the quilter who did it was absolutely amazing. Her mm -hmm. seams were spot on even though they were it, the whole thing was made up of all these like little two inch squares the entire thing and it was huge it was i think almost a queen size quilt of these little two inch squares so as you guys can imagine that's a lot of squares and her every seam of hers was like bang on she was like such a good quilter um when you have a really really well pieced quilt like that it's not hard to long arm at all so Heather Grint said, yay, progress. I can see the bottom of my sink. <laughs> I totally understand that. Totally. With all these kids I have, when there's like an empty sink in my kitchen, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Vicki said, Stephanie, if you want to send me some scraps, I sure would be happy. I don't have much. Email me. I'd be happy to. <laughs> Teresa McBrayer said, Vicki, what is the smallest size scrap tool you use? That's a good question. I'd like to know that too. Stephanie Smith said, since both of you long arm, Yvette doesn't long arm, just me, but uh, should I put a stay stitch around my quilt? Um, you can. I have people that send them to me with a stay stitch, but it's not necessary. But what I will tell you guys, if you've never had anything long armor, or if you have and your long armor hasn't said this to you, please make sure your borders are attached real well. Either lower your stitch length or back stitch. I recommend back stitching. Most quilts are pretty, they stay together. Like I've never seen, I've only, well, that's not true. One time I've seen a quilt where the blocks came apart, but it was a brand new quilter, you know. Um, give her grace, but the most place where I see quilts come apart is border is the borders. When you put it on the long arm, if you guys don't know, there's a rail at the top and a rail at the bottom. And as quilt or as long arm quilters, we have to attach the fabric to both and they go under a rail and it stretches it. That's just how it works. I mean, we're not like yanking it, but it, it stretches it. Okay. So when you put it on the rollers, if those seams are already starting to come apart, the borders, I guarantee you, they're gonna they're gonna pull apart and um I can't tell you how many quilts I've had to fix before I could actually long arm it and it's an easy fix but it takes time um because they were already pulling apart and I knew if I put it on the long arm they would come apart so yeah definitely make sure your borders are sewn on really well now I do recommend a stay stitch if you don't have borders on your quilt and especially if you have um 
like if you're making, what's the word I'm looking for? A quilt that has um, like triangles on the edge, like something with a bias cut. Uh, I'm not sure if Emily is here, is still here. I did a quilt for her that she had edges like that, but she stay stitched the whole thing and it was perfect. So let's see. Heather said, you know, you can have a scrap quilt out of a particular line of fabric, right? Stuff. Yeah. I know, but usually I'll tell you guys once I, and I don't know how Yvette feels about this. Once I finish a quilt in a certain fabric line, unless it's something I'm so in love with, I'm usually like, okay, I'm good. I have a quilt out of that fabric line. I don't want to make another one. I don't keep scraps. Well, like, let's say if you didn't, like, would you make more than one quilt out of the same fabric line? I mean off the cuff, I would say no. Yeah. Like you said, if it's something that I really love or like if I made something, like if, I, if I'm if i looking at like say this fabric and I only did this little thing with it, then maybe, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but to make a whole nother quilt, probably not. Yeah. So like, you guys know how much I love the Christmas morning line. I made that quilt and then I did actually have some scraps left, but they were big. It wasn't like, little one inch squares it was enough with the addition of just a little bit extra to make that table runner that i made that i showed you guys of the christmas morning so i did in that case there was an exception to the rule but that's because they were like big pieces they weren't like tiny little things and i had that pattern in mind already to make um the table runner with christmas morning so i was like well i might as well cut most of the fabric from the scraps and then supplement with whatever else but most of the time I don't make another project out of a fabric line. So, yeah. Can you long arm or quilt with a minky back? Yes. I love long arming minky. If you pick the right pattern, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, if so, do you omit the batting? Depends on, I don't, depends on the quilter. I do use a thinner batting, a light cotton. Um, but no, I, I use batting. If I make a block that has really small pieces, I will put a stabilizer on the back. Okay. <laughs> Natalie. Hi, Natalie. How you doing? She said, no one understands dishes with four kids. Uh, Aurora said, I stay stitch all of my quilts, especially a jelly roll quilt. I'm telling you, this is the first time I've ever heard the term stay stitch. I've never heard of that in my entire life. Yeah. It's kind of like a basting <laughs> stitch, but some people do all the way around the edge of their quilt. Yeah. It's not really necessary to be honest with you, at least from my standpoint as a long arm quilter, unless you have bias edges. Um, like I did, oh, that's the word I was looking for. I did a herringbone quilt a couple years ago and it had a lot of obviously bias edges on that and no border so I had to put a stay stitch on that it just helps it from stretching all over the place yep but other than that it's not necessary you don't need to stay stitch it to be long armed so but if that's what makes you guys happy do it it's your quilt well I always got my quilts back from David with what must be a stay stitch because I, I had no idea what it was. I thought it was oh, something yeah. that that's yeah. the basic stitch that we put along the edges to hold it on the long arm. Okay. Yep. But when I when I do mine for people, I always trim their quilts for them and then I pull those stay stitches out. So yeah, he trimmed my quilt, but he never pulled them out. Oh yeah, I do. So I, I would always wait until after I had bound the quilt and then I mm -hmm. would cut them all off while I was doing all my other like trimming. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know what they would, I figured they were there for a reason, <laughs> but yeah. I, I didn't know what. 
and I'd certainly never heard the term. So, yep. Good to know. Yeah. So when you roll the quilt on the frame, um, for anybody who's not had a quilt long armed, when you roll it on the frame, um, me personally, not all long arm, not, not all long arm quilters do this, but I know a lot of them do. I roll it, get everything set nice and smooth. And then I baste it down each edge of your quilt. So your quilt doesn't move while I'm getting prepared to do the next row. I want it to stay nice where, right where I put it. So I put, and it's literally right on the edge, like an eighth of an inch. And some quilters, like she was saying, David left them in. Um, I usually take them out before I send them back to people. But even if I didn't, like your binding would cover it or you could just take them out, but I always take mine out. It just keeps the quilt in place so it doesn't yeah. get all funky. <laughs> Denise said, I have a double wedding ring quilt that needs to be quilted. Oh, I bet that's gorgeous. Getting some stuff done over there. Are you talking to me? Yep. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Teresa said, I haven't used Minky on my backing yet. Which way do you place the salvage? Okay, that's a good question, actually. I put the salvage um, not left to right. I put it top to bottom because it Minky is very stretchy for those of you who know Minky and have used Minky. But if you put it salvage to salvage, it stretches less. So you have less trouble with it. Shelly said, you stay stitch necklines and armholes on garments. Oh, okay. Judy L said, I must go now. Thanks for the great time and the information. Sure. Hi, Judy. Brenda Shutt said, hi there, guys and gals and non-binary pals. Hope y'all are having a peaceful holiday season. Thank you, Brenda. Julie Quilt says, as you know, I'm a new long armor. Do you float your tops? Yes, I do not attach them to the rail. I think it's, you'll have to find what works for you, but I feel like it's more difficult if you attach the backing and the top to the bolt to the rails, um, because if you don't wind them at just the same exact amount, you're gonna have bulkiness either usually on the bottom and when you take your quilt off of the long arm, you're gonna have like a spot that's like not quilted, if that makes sense. Like you're gonna have a bunched up piece of fabric. So yeah, I don't, I, I attach the bottom um, and make it tight and then I float the top. And that's another reason why I baste. Cause as you, um, if you attach the bottom and then you base the top, you roll it, baste it and it'll stay right where you want it. So you're not gonna get any like bulkiness at all. Stephanie Smith said, my long armor likes to have backing to have selvage edges at the top. Yeah, it, I, I agree. It's easier to have selvage at the top and the bottom. If it can't be, it can't be. I don't like vertical seams. Um, and I'm sure any long armors out there will tell you that they're difficult because unless you sew a perfect straight line, it's very hard to achieve to, when you open the fabric and if you put the a vertical seam, it bunches right up against that seam as you go down in the quilt as you're quilting it. So it's, it can turn out not so good. So anytime I can get a horizontal seam or salvage at the top and the bottom where it doesn't stretch, perfect. Oh, good, Julie. I'm glad that made sense. Good night, Netta. Hi, Netta. We'll be on for just like five more minutes. If you guys have any last questions, you guys have had a lot of questions tonight. I like it. <laughs> I 
and then you can go spend some money at so yeah <laughs> <laughs> what if you have to piece the back that's a good question i um try to get print like fabric that like on my christmas morning quilt that i showed you guys earlier I try to get fabric that's non-directional so I can piece it with two horizontal pieces. Um, I have a lot of quilters that will do a piece here and then a piece in the middle with like their extra blocks and then a piece in the bottom, that's fine. Just a vertical seam right down the middle. You can still do it, it's just very difficult. And for me personally, I always tell somebody that sends me one like that, I do the best I can. I put my clamps on the side, pull that fabric out. So hopefully it doesn't get any bunches, but can't 100% guarantee. That being said, I've only had one issue ever. So, um, but it was, it was pretty wavy in the middle and she just, it wasn't sewn badly. It just had like a little space where there was like no stitching. So good night, Stephanie. You've done a great job answering all those questions. There was lots of questions today. <laughs> I liked it though. That's fun. I know. I, I, I agree. I like the questions too. Yeah. Cause sometimes when we're sewing, we miss all the chat and can't catch all the questions. So. Yeah. I, I, you, I just thought I would let you have your chat. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get some done? Oh, that's gorgeous. Yvette. Yeah. I didn't get the whole thing done, but. I, the one that I was, that I started working on, I was, I totally spaced out. I didn't put any of the black in between. Uh huh. So I'm going to have to redo that one. Oh, that's so, so pretty. It looks like, everything. it looks like piano keys. I know, right? <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yep. I'm happy with it. It's lovely. <laughs> it is lovely. Bye, Kathy. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> I've spent my budget for Christmas. So no, say yeah for, so yeah for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's very easy to spend too much money with them. So I just don't watch. <laughs> yep. Thank you, Cherie. Thank you, Nancy. Oh, Tracy said it looks like a kid's <laughs> telephone. I didn't think about that. Yeah, kinda. yeah, it does. It does. So Yvette and I will be on Vlogmas. Um, I think you're doing it through the end of the year, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. And then I'm doing it through Christmas. So check us out there for the next few weeks. And I'm not sure when we're going to sew again, because this week is Christmas. <laughs> so I'll be sewing. I just may not be sewing with you. With everybody. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. On camera. Maybe, <laughs> maybe the following week. I was thinking maybe something for New Year's or I'm not sure. We'll have to talk about that, but. Yeah. I'm sure we're going to talk. Oh, no, we're not ever. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, thank you guys so much for coming. It was so much fun to sit here and talk to you guys and clean up my space a little bit. I got my whole cabinet cleaned up over here. So I'm pretty happy about that. And it looks like Yvette got some progress done on her thing. So yes, I'm very happy too. Hey, I hope you all, if we don't see you or talk to you before, well, come to Yvette's live. You're going to be real live on Wednesday, right? Yes, I will. So come to Yvette's live on Wednesday. Cause that'll be our last chance to see you. But if we don't catch you there, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Yep. And take care. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Bye. Bye. <laughs>